Hello. Can you guys hear me now? Hello. Oh, there we go. I hear myself. Can you guys hear me now? Okay, hold on. Hello? Hello? Oh, there we go. <laughs> now it's going to be rubber banding for you guys. <laughs> All right. Um... Yes. Okay. Good. Good. All right. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't even know why it wasn't doing that early. That is so silly. Oh man. That's a great start. That's how I start my streams. There's gotta be. There's always gotta be something happening at the beginning before you start. Um. There's so much we gotta cover here today, guys. I'm pretty excited. Usually, I don't like to turn off my like little. Not like the Honkai, Honkai Star Rails music here, which I'll probably turn it down here for a second. Hold on, hold on. So, here, there we go. So, I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you guys get your snacks and stuff. I, I gotta turn this down on my headphones because it's like having a party in my ears. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I am so happy to see you guys. Uh, that who've made it those who've made it and like I said, uh, no wait you guys didn't hear me earlier So let me repeat what I'm saying. Welcome. I I am your friendly neighbor Lisa Foxy and Welcome welcome to my live stream. I usually don't do both. I was like sipping my tea earlier because I was like <laughs> Like you just saw I just pulled up my tea. But anyway, so it's so good to have you guys and um, I'm just so excited to pull for Acheron today. The new update had just came out here on um, Honkai Star Rail and some other great amazing characters. There's things we're going to look at today that I want to do and um, some other fun exciting stuff along the way. So uh, just sit back, relax, you know. This is also not only just a regular gaming channel for me over on my YouTube channel, which you guys can check me out on, uh, you know, Lisa, Lisa Foxy's gameplay channel. So you guys can hop over there if you like. Um, and show some love too but it's so good to have you guys with me and um, yeah so let's go ahead and I'll start probably with before I start with Honkai here the game I'm gonna go over and check out the new videos that they just released today too so let's go and do that and uh, actually I'll probably be right here I, I usually put like the big screen so you guys can see everything but I'm sure you guys don't mind having me along the way with this uh, let's see. I tried to also pull for uh, Jing Yuan. If you guys don't know who Jing Yuan is, he is the general uh, in Honkai Star Rail. He's like the awesome guy who summons a big giant deity thing and smashes people with thunders. <laughs> Thunder stuff, but yeah. So, um, I well, I got his character, but I was trying to get his card. So, uh, I am just so excited, guys. That you have no idea how crazy I've been for this so yeah so we got two videos here we got uh well actually there was three I, I kind of I snuck ahead and just to, to see the color the, people call it the color commercial uh collab <laughs> with the makeup so I mean for you guys who haven't haven't seen that yet uh, I'll make sure you guys get to check that out uh today um but yeah so let me go ahead and start that I'm gonna mute Honkai Star Rail's uh, game music here and that way you guys can hear and check out this video with me All right, let's turn this up Apply your color. <laughs> oh wow. 
And some people think this is Robin from Honkai Star Rail. I, because of the wings with the coming from uh, the side with the, uh, where the ears are. So I would not be surprised if it is uh, Robin. Um, so I'm just. I'm just so excited with, with each new character that comes out and all that's related to that. So um, let's see what else we got here. We got uh, pretty much information about Akron. So let's check that out. I like to check out both of these. So hopefully you guys got your snack. Get ready because, you know, it's Honkai. <laughs> we have just received an S-Level 1 notice from the IPC. Akron, female, age, current residence, and home world unknown. A kindly member of the Riddlers, perhaps? Akron is the prime suspect in the assassination of several criminals wanted by the IPC, including one high-profile case involving a certain Everflame mansion. Wait, she eliminated wanted criminals and became a wanted criminal? The IPC is seeking help from the public. If you see this person or have any clues about her whereabouts, please notify us using the comment section at the bottom of this page. The IPC will contact you shortly and reward you with how many credits? What is she, a Stellaron Hunter? Oh my goodness. <clears throat> to help us explore the rumors surrounding the enigmatic Acheron, we have invited an eminent soothsayer as today's expert guest. Without further ado, let's welcome Black Swan. Akron keeps a low profile and operates in the shadows. The IPC doesn't have any clear leads. What approach would you recommend? Stories can deceive, but memories never lie. <laughs> a very Black Swan recommendation. <laughs> now then, let's take a look at the precious memory bubble Black Swan brought us today. I see Akron is a lightning type character on the path of Nihility. Here we see her reaching into her sleeve and pulling out a, she's pulling out a, Peach? <laughs> well, anyway, let's get down to business. When Akron uses her basic attack, she deals lightning damage based on her attack to a target enemy. It wasn't easy getting this memory bubble here. Not going to take a closer look? Oh, uh, <laughs> compared to other characters, Akron has a very unique charging mechanism known as Slash Dream. When using her skill, Akron accumulates a certain quantity of Slash Dream. She then inflicts set stacks of Crimson Knot on a single target and deals lightning damage to adjacent targets based on her attack. After accumulating enough Slash Dream, Akron can use her ultimate. She frees her right arm and draws her sword, casting everything into a sea of darkness and engulfing her enemies in a black hole of terror. Only the color of blood remains. <laughs> I'm having nightmares tonight. I have read countless memories, but only in her memories has all color faded away. She's either hiding something, or black and white are her favorite colors. <laughs> Incredible! When using her ultimate, Akron can choose a target for each of her three attacks. Each attack deals a certain amount of lightning damage and removes a set number of Crimson Knot stacks. Whenever Crimson Knot is removed, lightning damage is dealt to the target, with greater damage being for each stack removed. Finally, when sheathing her blade, Acheron deals lightning damage to all enemies based on her attack while removing all stacks of Crimson Knot from the battlefield. Even karma can be cut by that blade. Akron is truly one of a kind. Uh, what's her secret? Let's keep watching. Thanks to her one of a kind talent, when using her ultimate, Akron can reduce enemy toughness while ignoring weakness types and decrease all type res for all enemies. Plus, when any unit on the field, even enemy units, causes an enemy to become debuffed, Akron gains one slash dream and one stack of Crimson Knot. All tools are available to use, including the enemies. <laughs> you said it. Keep what's mine and borrow what's yours. But that's not all the talent does. When an enemy target with Crimson Knot is defeated, that Crimson Knot will be transferred to the enemy unit with the most Crimson Knot stacks on the field. If Akron wants to maximize her battle prowess and ability to inflict damage, she's going to need allies on the field who can inflict debuffs. No one's self, know your allies and know your enemy. The rain falls <laughs> on us all. 
when Akurai uses her technique to enter battle. At the start of every wave, I repeat, every wave, she gains a certain amount of slash stream after her next ultimate, stacks a certain number of Crimson Knot on a random enemy, inflicts lightning damage on all enemies based on her attack, and reduces toughness of all enemies regardless of weakness type. And that's not all. If Akron encounters a normal enemy, her technique will vanquish it without even entering battle. And if the hit doesn't land, it won't consume any technique points. I'm getting the impression that Akron has her own way of doing things. Just what kind of person is she exactly? I can show you memories, but interpreting them is up to you. Why are there so many riddles on today's show? It seems like no matter where Akron travels throughout the universe, danger is waiting for. After unlocking a specific trace, Akron enters battle with a set amount of Slash Dream and inflicts a certain number of Crimson Knot stacks on a random enemy. When using her skill, they gain a set number of Crimson Knot stacks. When allies use a basic attack against the same enemy, they become inflicted with Burn. Akron gains one point of Slash Dream and the enemy is inflicted with another stack of Crimson Knot. Realizing the combos they can create with Akron's abilities, allies inflict a debuff on the enemy Enemy, triggering another wave of Slash Dream and Crimson Knot. The enemy tries to get smart with a counterattack, but ends up triggering a debuff from Akron's ally, landing themselves with a stack of Crimson Knot and granting Akron another point of Slash Dream. Woo! It's ultimate o'clock, and Akron doesn't hold back. Amid the reign of darkness, her blade cuts blood red slashes between heaven and earth. <laughs> Just like that, the enemy is vanquished from this point of existence. We're gonna need a bigger ambulance. Because mm, they're dead. As though they never even existed. We learned all kinds wow. of things about Akron. And, uh, well, I've got you. Looking at the year ahead, any chance I can get rich and retire early? That's easy. Wait one moment. Uh-oh, no, Albert. About your hopes for the future, I recommend taking a nap. It might happen in your dreams. Oh, nap. I can hardly take a... Oh. <laughs> what the... <laughs> Albert started talking in owl language. What, is, what the... He started chirping. <laughs> what the heck? Wow. Oh my gosh. All right. Um <laughs> Man. All right. So that was <laughs> with Acheron and uh so Albert did that. It looks like uh Albert comes back with, with another one with our I call it our soda guy. I I was so hoping Honkai Star Rail, I hate to say it, was making uh this character here, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna call him Gala for short. Sorry, I know that's not his name, but I'm gonna call him Gala. And uh, I was hoping for him to have his own personal trailer, but you know, he's uh, one of the not one of those five star characters, unfortunately. You know, I, I started thinking because Well is a five star killer character, you know, he doesn't even have a trailer, I just realized that. Honkai, is, where, where is Welt's trailer? Does he deserve... He deserves one, too, you know? <laughs> it's like everybody got all the cool trailers, but poor Welt. I mean, I know he come, he came from Honkai uh, Impact 3rd, but still. I feel bad, man. All right, let's, let's check out this one. Interested in sampling the planet of festivities, Dreamy Azota? <laughs> you won't find it under the waning lights. In order to get to know Panacone's most legendary drinksmith, You'll need to hang around some shady street corners first. A security officer whose name strikes fear into the hearts of evildoers. This laid-back shaker is the main character of today's Keep It Up with Star Rail, Gallagher! Gallagher. Gallagher is a fire-type character following the path of abundance, and when it comes to brawling, he's a seasoned pro. As they say, a Drake Smith who can't fight is no security officer. When using his basic attack, Gallagher deals fire damage to a target enemy based on his attack. And when using his skill, he hands over his special brew, thereby healing a target ally. And just to be clear, this brew is 100% alcohol-free, guaranteed safe for battlefield consumption. Coca-Cola. 
Would Gallagher love this. throws a powerful punch that inflicts Besotted on all enemies for a set number of turns while simultaneously dealing fire damage. In the Besotted state, enemies receive more weakness break damage. When allies attack a Besotted target, the attacker can restore a set amount of HP. For the world's quintessential non-alcoholic break experience, only one drink smith will suffice. After using his ultimate, Gallagher's next basic attack is enhanced, dealing increased fire damage to the target enemy and reducing their attack for a set number of turns. After unlocking a specific trace, Gallagher uses the enhanced basic attack Nectar Blitz to attack besotted enemies, and the healing effect of his talent will extend to allies. During exploration, when Gallagher uses his technique, he immediately attacks the enemy, then inflicts besotted on all enemies for a set number of turns while also dealing fire damage. Panacona's drink smiths are pretty laid back. The drink you get depends on how they're feeling and whatever's on the shelf. And as of right now, Gallagher is wondering how to go about creating a thirst quenching treat out of a crazed flame spewing alien life form. <laughs> Mixology is physical, so Gallagher and his assistants first do some warm up stretches with the ingredient. The ingredient counters and enters spontaneous combustion. Uh, not bad. This will definitely add some extra flavor. The assistants are in hot pursuit, but Gallagher isn't in a hurry. He cracks open a gold one and takes a sip. Battling is tiring business, you know. Just as expected, the ingredient attacks, inflicting heavy damage on the team. Thankfully, everyone's still on their feet. With the ingredient's toughness almost gone, it's time to get it under control. Gallagher uses his ultimate, inflicting the besotted stick. Ah, and thanks to the effect of the Besotted Stake, the assistants also restore their HP and deal more weakness break damage to the ingredient. And now the final step. In this non-alcoholic dream, the day's ingredient is shaken, stirred, and blended together with Panacone's tipsy evening breeze. Voila! One glass of off in the afternoon. A toast to one year with no paid leave. <laughs> to end our show today, we're gonna read out a letter from the handle Firepower Senior King. Hello, Albert. Hello, hello. I really loved your show, especially the Security Officer Drinksmith episode. I only watched the beginning, though. I couldn't wait to get to Pentagoni. <laughs> Thank you for your kind words, but finish the episode next time. <laughs> Soda, here we come. Time to hang around the shadiest street corners I can find. <clears throat> Wish me luck, guys. Uh, are we about to get sued? Okay, wow. <laughs> so we got a lot to uncover. Um, wow. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to get all of them. Like I said, I will collect them all. I, I'm serious when I say that, so... Uh, also, I gotta make sure I check back on my Twitch people because you guys are there too. You know, I, I I apologize if I miss anything you guys are saying. Uh, hopefully, I'm not. But um, let me go ahead and get that settled before I switch on over back to the main game on Honkai. So, hopefully, you guys, like I said, are ready and set because uh, we're gonna have quite an adventure in this. I apologize if it's a little laggy every now and then, but I try. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our Honkai Star Rail game going. And uh, I plan to pull for Acheron because I was preparing a little bit for that. And uh, we'll get our little music thing back as well. All right. There we go. Uh, I may turn down the game a little bit. I Hopefully you guys can hear me along with the game. Just let me know. If anything changes and you like to have things, you know, change around, just tell me. So I gotta get everything like back to normal here. So let me go ahead and pull up on the big screen here for you guys. I'm looking forward to today's, like I said, today's episode and stuff. And uh, we're gonna be chilling out together. Doing a lot of fun things together, especially mostly on Honkai Star Rail. And, uh, you know, figured I'd take a little bit of a small break a little bit here. Because I, I know I have, like, other fun little games to do, too, along the way. 
and stuff. Alright, give me a second. I'm sorry. I know I usually get all this out the way, but we're going to go ahead and hop in the game here. So I won't keep you guys waiting on that. do that. Alright. And hello Haven Cafe. Welcome. Alright. So we are here. I'm sure you guys were looking forward to this moment. You know me, I usually do some video reactions on some of the gameplay stuff before I do anything, so... <laughs> Alright, let's see what we need. Okay, yes, I will unlock, of course, this, as usual, uh, the Nameless Glory. I always do that, um, but I won't do it right now. So we got a message, I believe, from the Astral Express family. So let's go ahead and see what's going on on there. Looks like we got a package from Pom Pom. Or it's not from Pom Pom, but we got something from him. Got a package delivered to the express. Papa's all excited. Oh, look, there's Welt. <laughs> I do recall express has received one of these things before, no? <laughs> Marge's taking picture. Oh my goodness. What kind of package? So mysterious. Okay, and yes, the express records did mention this has happened before. And Dong Hung is like, hmm. Oh, that thing. I remember now. Angel, this is some good stuff. You better get back and have a, have a look. Okay. I already know what to expect. Who's the... Yeah. Who is it? Like, is there a name? Does it say who's supposed to receive it? Does it have Angel's name on it? Nahimiko. This is a package sent to the Express from another nameless in the cosmos. I need you to be interested, Angel. Remember to take a take a look once you get back to the express. What if Pom Pom doesn't know? Message came a bit late. What if Pom Pom doesn't know? <laughs> huh. Pom Pom thinks you're the one who that doesn't have a clue. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm sorry, Pom Pom. Wow. Okay, so we got stuff from the Astral, Astral Express and uh, we got also some other things here. Their anniversary, which I will be happy to claim these free. Look at this free stuff. Yes, I've been clicking these two free before. You know, I've been trying. But we got a f extra more to go. This is just... Hawkeye is just so sweet they're so nice giving it's their first anniversary by the way so happy anniversary to honkai star rail and um i'm just excited to do all their little events here today and uh we also here's also my invitation code i hope you guys can use it uh you can write it down or anything if you like and you can use it to join of course and get really cool re rewards uh inside as well just also it gives me something good in return so you know all, all this good stuff but anyways hopefully you guys do get to join in uh we also got this event uh with the devil in velvet so i'm looking forward to do that also we got the showcase where we get to try acheron along with laucha i which i've already have him but hey he's he's still you know free stuff here so laucha and uh you know I, even though he, they just said his name, I'm still going to call him Gala. So Gala, he got it, he's here too. And then we get Pila, of course, that you guys get to try. And, uh, of course, our famous Dong Hong. But I'm not going to end up playing these two. 
unfortunately, but I will play at least all three of these because you get free stuff out of it. And of course, I did not finish anything related to the chaos thing or the, the simulated universe. Well, this is actually the new thing in the simulated universe, which is uh, World 9. And I, pro I will, of course, try that because I do want the last uh, het Hetra, her last... Um, Elon, uh, or whatever you want to call it, her evolved thing. But anyway, so it helps boost her skills. Um, and this is the new, of course, still the the other simulate. It's not new, but it it's it's where the swarm and all that crazy stuff in there happens. They got some really interesting things in there. I'm not gonna play that until I beat everything in there. So let's go ahead and we'll start with uh, Akron, and then um, I will, you know, get all my little resource and then. We'll try to pull for her. I appreciate you guys being patient with me and, you know, like I said, just sit back and relax. This channel is definitely more of her just to relax and, you know, just watch me and talk and if you like. Hopefully you guys can hear everything in here. So yeah, so she does, she inflicts de debuffs on the enemies and gain charges and unleash an ultimate. And Let's see, the ultimate ignores enemy weakness types when reducing toughness and further reduces all reduces enemy all types resists a res or they call it res. And the technique can instantly de defeat enemies. Interesting. Oh. And we're in Panacone. Okay. It's my first time trying her, so I'm looking forward. Is that more enemies? Okay, all right. So use Acheron's technique to instantly defeat enemies. Oh wow. Okay, during the exploration, using Acheron's technique to attack normal enemies will instantly defeat them without entering combat. When not hitting enemies, no technique points are consumed. Interesting. So it's like she's doing Assassin Creed things. That's cool. One shot. Wowzy. Oh. Wow. Okay. That is really nice. How they did that. Okay. So it looks like in this part, yeah, we can't switch characters, of course, but it looks like we can just, we can't one shot higher end bosses, so you're just going to have to go in there and fight them. Alright, so it talks about her attacks. So her basic attack deals minor lightning damage to a single enemy and... Octobolt Flash gains one point and Slash Dreams inflict one stacks of Crimson Knot. So she's, of course, she does lightning damage to the target as well as minor lightning damage to adjust, adjacent targets. Okay. Slash Dream Cries in Red deals three hits of minor lightning damage to a sin single enemy. If Crimson Knot is removed from a target, then deals minor lightning damage to all enemies. Finally, deals one hit of lightning damage to all enemies and remove all Crimson Knots. Okay. So this is her ultimate. But we did read about that ultimate, though. So I'm, I'm just going to jump in here. I just wanted to see. I'm just, just going to try... Wow, it just one shot everything. Okay, I think I probably would use it on this. Alright. Bounce. And I'll use him for defense. Use special. Probably should save that special, but they always throw like a second enemy in there. Oh, this is crazy! Look at that! Alright. What? Oh, man. Okay. More business, eh? 
Wow. Some crazy damage going on right there. Alright. Well, we can get rid of this person here, but... Time to make a decision. Probably we'll use uh, shampoo for that, though. Enemy data secure. There we go. Well, we can do that. <laughs> Alright. Ooh, I could. Let's do I weep for the departed. That. It wow. Her damage is crazy. Really crazy. I probably don't have to do too much for this. Just let her finish it off. There we go. Wow. Alright. Laucha. Okay. Laucha is the, the best hill, at least for me. But I cannot wait to try the other one, so... Okay. Automatic kills allies. Okay. Trouble ahead. I probably should have used the restore thing first, but I didn't. I just what made him go in there. <laughs> so what the restore thing does, he usually has it out automatically. Which could have helped them. And I just didn't do it. But it's fine. There we go. I'll see you off. Yeah, see, that could have... I'm gonna help myself. And then I'm just gonna cast that. Yep. And then... He'll do that. It still works for me. Louch is great. <laughs> Alright. Songs for you. Probably do that and then you can fight it. Rock with it. <laughs> Alright, so we did that. Lucky for him, he's got that shield on him. Pretty good crowd today. Let's there we go. Alright. So we got... This one, so I want to see how his heals are. He's, I, I was looking forward to get him anyways, regardless. <laughs> Alright, fix enemy with special status restores the attacker HP, increased break damage. Oh. So he's got a falcon punch vibe going on in there. Alright. Fire. Alright, so deals minor fire damage to a single enemy. Immediately restores an ally's HP. Okay. Inflict bestowed on all enemies and deals fire damage to them at the same time. Enhances the next basic attack to Nectar Blitz. Okay. And then the Bestolt state makes targets receive more break damage. Every time the target gets attacked by an ally, the attacker's HP is restored. Ooh. Attack the enemy after entering battle 
inflicts bestow to all enemies and deals minor fan fire damage to all. So not only he's a healer, but he does insane amount of fire magic as well. Got a whole fire team in here today. Alright. I'm gonna use her first. And we're gonna see a special. Okay. Interesting. And then he'll just break him. Nice. Wow. Alright, alright. So we got that. Alright. I know you guys like the music too, so here we go. Add that up a little bit for you guys. This music is awesome. They brought they're just they're they're jamming at the studio. That's all I'm thinking when I see this. They're just like having a fun time in here. Alright. I'm so glad I finally got Himiko though. I was like, yeah, I got her in my party. My actual party. Which I still have to enhance her like crazy. Alright. I don't know. I don't think I needed that, but I'm just gonna use it anyways. In the mood for another beating? So his restore. Okay, okay. So he just pops open and just. He's doing a Laucha thing. <laughs> Alright. Not bad for the fire damage, though. He's calling his friends. I'm just gonna get rid of him here soon. I was like ready to do it again. I was like, okay, I'm gonna en enhance her again. That's what's gonna end up happening. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, I can't wait till I finally obtain him because that is exactly what I am planning to do with that. And I will see what Pom Pom has. So I do want to know what's going on with that. I should also probably do these as well. I think I can now claim these. So I can claim them all. Just spat dispatch them again. I mean, I'll probably fix all of this later. But, it's good. It's good stuff. And, just get all these little goodies. I'm just crafting away. I have enough to craft pretty much everything in here if I wanted to. Okay. So, let's go to the Astral Express, because if I'm not mistaken, I believe there's something we need to get there. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I realize... We got more information too in here, but I'm not going to read all these. I'm going to only read them on my own time. Because that would be a lot of reading. <laughs> and I, I love a good mystery, but you know. Alright, so missions. Here we go. Alright, let's go see what's going on here. To the Astral Express. The Astral Express. Okay. There's the box. After oh wait oh good okay I was like did I accidentally okay. So after noticing that you got close to a package, Pom Pom excitedly hand came over from somewhere else. Ah, there you are, Angel. What's the matter? Are you interested in this package? I bet you are. I'm very curious. <laughs> I'm all about conserving my buddy uh, life. What the? So I, I, I ain't care. Uh huh. What's a hair and express care doing here? Okay, I, that, I'm very curious. What's going on? I figured you'd be. This is a gift from another nameless in the cosmos. The express had received one before, but there's. Many who walked on the path of Trailblaze when... I'm sorry, even if you never met them, they're good companions of Trailblaze. 
The storage room on the Express still holds plenty of gifts sent by, sent by many of the Nameless. Other Nameless? That's right. Although Akavili is no longer with us, many Nameless continued to hold on to the will of Trailblaze. They stream across the cosmo, cosmos to fulfill the creed of Trailblaze. Some of them were once passengers on the Express. Others were never aboard it. Never boarded it. But I guarantee you that they're all interesting people, and it's, it will be good if you can meet them one day. Okay, open up quick. Cool your jets. We're opening it now. Which. I have a package too, which is sitting there. I can't wait to open mine a little later. <laughs> okay. You and Pom Pom open the package and discover a projection device in the style of a scroll. Huh. Hey! This must be the conductor, Pom Pom, of the Express. It's been a while. And this is. I'm Angel from the Express Crew. The, oh my gosh, why did they allow us to keep using that? The Galactic Baseballer. <laughs> what an ugly New Year card. I want to return it. Wow, that's not that. What the? Yes, I'm going to click that. I'm a Galactic Baseballer. <laughs> Does being the galactic baseballer mean you're really famous? Sorry, I'm not part of your generation. <laughs> this is Angel, the new member of the Express crew. <laughs> I'm Mag, a former nameless. I bid you the latest greeting from the distant cosmic past. A pleasure to meet you, Angel. Looks like you are a nameless that was chosen by the conductor of the express. Pom Pom, is there something you've been hiding? I expected the gift, but it looks like another job. I would say that, but okay. Pom Pom, is there something you've been hiding? I didn't. This is a good thing. I think it really suits Angel. <laughs> looks like the conductor hasn't told you what you're supposed to do. We'll ask away. I'll answer your questions. Mag, a former nameless? Yes. If we are talking about Amber Eris, I should be from AE 2150. Or 2150, <laughs> if you're talking in years term, I believe. It's several Amber's eras away. I've been dead for a long time, so that's why I say I'm a former nameless. I think I'm right, aren't I? You don't remember? There's someone from 100 years ago, so who am I talking to? Okay, so you're someone 100 years ago. The cosmos moves in mysterious ways. Let's talk about me later, okay? No, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna... So, so who am I talking to? I'm Mags, trailblazing Will. Hmm. I bet you've probably talked with something like a... Renitz or Medtex entity before. They're, that's pretty much what I am. Let's talk about me later, okay? Can I ask what's in it for me? That's the face you're making reminds me of some old friends. They were reluctant to work for no pay too. As part of the crew, have you ever been somewhere biddingly cold or blazing hot? I've been to Jorello. I've heard of Jorello. But isn't it supposed to be quite a hospitable planet, no? It has become a world blanket in snow. 
We come off her an, an insignificant. Well, she emphasized that. Blaze blessing for for the trailblaze. We can give the nameless just a a bit of warmth in the wind, winter winter wind, or cool breeze in places of excruciating heat. Even on smooth ride, the nameless can gain and use some almost impeccable luck. That is the benefit that I can bring to you and the other nameless. And if I refuse? Looking into your eyes, I can see the incredible nameless throughout history. I think you'll accept my offer for sure. Okay. In my time, the cancer of all worlds was spreading everywhere. The, the silver rail was blocked and extreme climate alterations rage to no end. Trailblaze never been an easy task. And after the fall of the Aeon Akavili, that was more true than ever. To complete our shared goal of Trailblaze, the nameless on different worlds all rose up. Some continued to go out and explore unknown quad quadrants, and others shared the story of nameless through songs. Everything they did was to make Trailblaze a little stronger. The way I help is by collecting the trailblazing experience of the nameless. As for specifics, well, the explanation can get a little abstract. I think if you try it out your, for yourselves, you'll get it. This power of Grace Vo Voyager is sealed with me. It collects trailblaze experiences. From the nameless, collect the luck occurred in their adventures. The offering blessings for the journeys of distant nameless. Now please, close your eyes. I'll mimic the memoria extraction process used by the Garden of Recollection and construct a familiar trailblazing experience using situations and companions you're familiar with. I'll use a kinder and gentler approach. You will experience the process of exploring, understanding, creating, and connecting once again here. Everything you have experienced will help support Trailblaze. Oh my. Okay. Welcome to Cosm... Cosmodesticity. <laughs> Here you can turn your trailblaze experience into blessings. All the nameless invited from all across the cosmos will support you in completing this great feat. Trailblaze experiences sounds a bit abstract, no? Don't worry, this is effectively your currency in Cosmodes. <laughs> Trailblaze funds. Our goal is to offer these Trailblaze funds to Pom Pom. The more Trailblaze funds you contribute, the greater your rewards. Now, let's talk about how to earn Trailblaze funds. Okay, in Cosmodes, you'll need to roll dice to advance on the map. Trailblazers can obtain Trailblaze funds through a vari variety of game modes. Trailblazers can contribute their Trailblaze funds to Pom Pom. The more funds they contribute, the more personal rewards they unlock. Contributions from all Trailblaze will gradually unlock Cosmic Contributions rewards. I will use scenes and companions you're familiar with to create the map upon which you adventure. Whoa! This can definitely draw some trailblazing experience from Passenger Angel. Oh, and he said something there. Okay. We're here to Hedera Space Station. Does, doesn't this bring back a lot of memories? 
sorry, I was thinking about <laughs> what the <laughs> moving requires you to consume dice. Let's try using these first. Okay. Oh, you're finally on the game tile. It's the windfall slot machine. Get the designated image to win the corresponding reward. Okay. Come try your luck, passenger angel. Oh! Just like that, huh? Okay. I got luck right there, just instant. Okay. Fun. Cute. Another three. You recognize the person before you and she introduced herself as Sheila Nova Guide of the Hetra Department of the Galactic Geopolitics. You feel that you don't actually know her. Her smile is forced but cold but fitting. She suddenly asks, is it possible to make an android into a real human? with a rich enough script. This is Encounter Tile. Encounter Tile. There are always choices you have to make while trailblazing. Don't make any choices that you'll regret, Passenger Angel. I feel that's impossible. But her smile is force fitting. She suddenly asks, Is it possible to make an android into a real human with rich enough scripts? I feel that's possible. After you make your choice, it's all in the hand of luck. Feels like failing is a logic trap or like the system's crashing. Ugh! Uh, Pom Pom thinks that might not be a good outcome. No problem. Though, try re-rolling... re-roll coin. It will let you try again. Oh, okay. Nice outcome this time. Alright. Ooh. Receive 2,000 trailblaze runs every time the die is cast. Okay. It's a land tile, but this time basically it's just buying a plot of land, you know? Yep, we'll let you keep earning trailblaze fun. It's a great deal, so make your purchase now. Okay. When you run into a fork, you can choose to proceed down different paths. There's also a lucky bubble here. Pom Pom will, f will pick this side for you first. Okay. Another windfall slot machine, but the rules seem a bit different this time. Okay, I got a feeling that the lucky bubbles you just picked up will increase your trailblaze fun this time. Let's give it a spin. Okay, not bad. Bobs can increase the trailblaze fun you can obtain. Look here! It's a golden encounter tile. Is something good about to happen? Is it? Your impression of Asta can't escape the stereotype of a rich lady, rich lady anymore these days, but she's obviously just a youthful and sometimes quick-tempered lead researcher. She has invited you to observe the stars tonight, and you arrived at the appointed place only to set eyes upon her newly purchased mega luxurious obscenely expensive telescope who wouldn't be overwhelmed by the feeling of am I worthy to stand next to her? But I can eagerly observe. I could touch the telescope. 
Eh, I'll observe the stars. It's like stars themselves are talking to you. Alright, let's try our luck. Ah! Huh. Okay. That's what teaches you the secret of the stars by speaking in your ear. Okay. The dice are all used up. Now it's time to contribute Trailblaze funds. Let's see, passenger angels' contributions are shooting up. That's impressive. Okay, so you gotta do that. Ooh. This contributions come reward, remember to claim your rewards. Okay. Let's continue our journey. Okay, before I do that, let me claim that. That's so nice, they give you all these goodies. Well, it seems you just got some remote dice. Okay. Use a remote dice to freely select how many steps you want to move. Try it out. There's something nice coming up. Every life is precious. They require someone to care for them. Please select the most appropriate assignee. Cultivating seedlings? Probably Ron May. Who's the best person to prune stray branches? Probably Argenti? Who's the best person to harvest the fruits? Seely. Okay. Select here to get an overview of the map. Okay. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, it's just like Monopoly. But with... Okay. <laughs> Honkai turned into Monopoly. Friends? Contribution of all nameless across the cosmos are recorded here. Give a like today to get reroll re coins. Okay. I could just like. Give everybody a like. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, don't, I mean, I only get three, so. <laughs> So it looks like we get the goodies. Rating pistol this gun rates all organism within its line of sight. Its scoring logic is unknown. Its eyes consistently scan its surrounding and then it announced random scores, but its scoring really of devoid of mythological Mythology. Oh, geez. <laughs> or is it that no one has figured out the pattern yet? Let's try this. Could it really be a genius? I think I'll stick with that. Scratch offs? Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I see how that works. Interesting.
Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so pretty much you could play this game. Okay, so we'll, I'll be sure to come back to this. It's not like I won't. Alright, so a little cute, fun mini game there. Alright, so before we do the story, um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try our luck in pulling for Akron. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, we got like a few extra. I'm going to use what we have now. Let me go ahead and exchange. Um, stellar Jades for that. We got six, so let's see with our six what it will give us. Hey, Mystic! Welcome! Hola! Oh, he's on his way, huh? Okay. Alright. Blue! I'm just gonna be hoping for my RNG pulls. Ugh! Just gotta adjust here. Never know! Sometimes out of those three pulls I get lucky. I think it's a normal, I can hear it. Nope. One more. Man. Oh! Dong Hong. <laughs> but I have enough Dong Hongs. It's like Dong Hongs, like you never have enough of me. My seventh. Okay. Alright, so let's give it our all. I'm prepared for this. As best as I can. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. So, 17. I don't hear the famous sound that we need, but we got a purple. Let's hope at least we got our healer. Alright. Anything but Dong Hong, please. I mean, I like Dong Hong, but, but anything but. <laughs> I need a healer. Oh my gosh, Pila. Oh my goodness. Pila shows up and she's like, hi! It's- I'm not Dong Hong, but you can have me! <laughs> Alright. And a normal one on that one. Alright. Another ten pulls. Let's go. Okay. What did we get? Oh my gosh, another peel! <laughs> Why? <laughs> and Dong Hong! It's like, nah, you don't- you not allowed to get the healer. Why? <laughs> this is almost like trying to get Ting Yun. But I got all my Ting Yuns. It's just now I need- I just- why? <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, I've got blue. And another blue. Alright, well... Keep pulling. So all we can do is keep pulling and trying. Okay. 
okay. I'm I'm okay with the purples. I'm happy. I just hope. <laughs> Can I have Gala, please? What? I like how. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh my gosh. All right, this is my this last last ten here. I mean, I'll be happy even just having Acheron. I'll be I'll be happy either way. Oh, no, I don't hear it. I don't hear the the golden train. It. Oh my goodness. The RNG in this. Okay. Pila. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why? I I would have been happy to have him at least once. Just once. One time. Man. Using my RNG pulls is spot on. Yep, a blue. I have enough for one more. Yep. Uh, it's tough. It's tough, it's tough. So... Well... I'm not gonna give up, but we still got the story and stuff because they do give us goods along the way. But hey, at least I tried. I I know I'll get them. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit of time, and plus getting this. So if anything, I'm still gonna continue on the story, um, and because I want to see what that's all about today. But I won't give up. <laughs> all right. Let me check the missions again. All right. So we got this. We need to go here and see what our story is today. Still fun, just to pull, just to see my luck, see what's going on today. You, Venturine. Ah, oh, friend. My expression wasn't much better than yours when I first saw this. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. It's her. Famous singer, Robin. Your eyes are... How could... How is that possible? Well, first of all, can I just say that this had nothing to do with me? I'm just an unlucky bystander here. The family can testify for me. If you don't believe me, just ask anyone in the Bloodhound family. They hate me, and they hate the IPC, so they never lie. This is not where the crime happened. What I showed you was a memory. The most basic light cone manifesting tech. Authorized by the Garden of Recollection and owned by the IPC. Did you really think the Galaxy Rangers were outsiders this whole time? Panacone has made a solemn commitment to protect the safety of anyone inside a family dream. Any person in distress will be forcibly awakened and safely returned to reality. What gives them the confidence to make such conclusive statements? Because behind this promise is the harmony. The family's Dreamweavers link up their minds together to construct an unbreakable defensive line. Breaking through this line of defense to create death in the dreamscape. <laughs> Not even a memo keeper could do that without the family's permission. Who could have done it, friend? The only one is her. The girl who calls herself a galaxy ranger. An imposter. An unsought guest. An emanator who hides her true identity. Ifrit's death was a foregone conclusion. And Robin? Her misfortune was staring right at her. 
Who will be the next to die? That's just one side of the story. Oh yeah, so uh, in case for you guys, you guys haven't seen me play through Panacani yet on YouTube, but it will come out. So I'll be sure, like I said, to put... Well, I've never said it here yet till now, but I'll be sure to put it in the link uh, description or in the description down below so that way I'll put the link in there. So that way all of this is still connected. So when I'm live streaming the story plus whatever's happening from here. So, uh, yeah, so that way you guys aren't really missing out my reactions to any of this. But yeah, it's, it, it's, Pentecone has been pretty crazy for me, at least. Okay, so uh, this is just a one-side story that I'm hearing. It's fine. Listen to your gut. Building trust always takes time. And I'm willing to wait. I just hope you realize that wherever that legacy is concerned... Covert plans are already underway throughout Panacone. Everyone's got their own agenda. Careful you don't get stuck on the wrong side. If I were you, I'd keep my distance from Acheron. After all, any schemes out in the open are always going to be better than a monster in the shadows. Right? Who's to say there isn't an even deeper conspiracy lurking beneath the surface? Memo Keeper, I think our little deal is finished. Aventurine is telling the truth. This memory is a real one, and there's no sign of any distortion grafting on. The IPC is not the Garden, and there are real limits to what they can actually do. But you know all this. Friend, let's not beat around the bush here. The thing is, I want to reach out personally to team up with the Astral Express. I told you I'm just not interested in scrambling for the legacy. I just came to Pentagony for work. I'm here to retrieve some lost property for the IPC. You catch my drift. I'm talking ownership of this frontier prison. This has all become a bad debt thanks to the cancer of all worlds. The IPC has tried sitting down for negotiations time and again, but the family wouldn't even take our calls. You have no idea how difficult these people are to deal with. Put it this way, they've hushed up the existence of death before, so they can definitely cover up any news about Robin's death. It'll just quietly float off like a bubble and pop. Nobody ever being the wiser. That's not fair, right? So then, friend, I need your help. What kind of help? I've got something on right now. What kind of I help? I have but only one goal. The family's front door is like a high wall. And to tear the whole thing down, I'll have to dig out a few chunks first. Once I find a weak point, the IPC will have plenty of means. Now we have our chance. So long as we can get to the truth behind her death, we can have justice for Robin. <laughs> While also gaining a valuable bargaining chip for bringing the family to the table. Truly a once in a blue moon opportunity. I've been investigating and making lots of friends all over Panacone precisely for this very moment. This tragic news would be extremely bad for the family, so they'll be doing everything they can to stop it leaking, especially to the IPC. But I trust that there are still a few factions that remain exceptions, and that's why I need you all. The reputation of the Astral Express precedes you. And the Harmony will give you the fairest of appraisals. You get to find out really what happened and seek justice. And I get to put it toward completing my mission for the IPC. It's what you'd call a win-win situation. Okay. 
So you want to take advantage of the family's trust in us. The Nameless would never associate with the ICP. The decision like this is way above my pay grade. A decision like this is way above my pay grade! <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Nameless would never associate with the ICP. Well, you can never say never. You want to take advantage of the family's trust in us. I'll just say this. The decision. Don't worry. You just head back and talk things over with your companions. That navigator is really smart. She must understand the value of this deal. Look, here's my contact details. If you come to any conclusions, call me. Oh, and take this. A thorough investigation can always use a little more funding. Don't mention it. So long, friend. I really am looking forward to uncovering the truth about death with everyone. Mm hmm A venturing just sauntered off. He really doesn't mean to force it, but something still seems off. What now? What are your plans? Black Swan. What is she thinking? That's a good question. What is she thinking? She likes to kind of pry into a lot of things when you're not too sure about. <laughs> it's hard to say. Alright. On the surface, this doesn't look like a bad deal for you. But Aventurine is a shrewd merchant whose scheme won't just be as simple as it appears to be. He doesn't know about Miss Firefly yet, but judging by your reaction, he may have noticed something going on and deliberately shifted topics to the truth of death to try and pull you in line with his way of thinking. That's quick thinking and very sound logic. Aventurine is no fool and working with him definitely has its dangers. We must cannot turn a blind eye to evil. For Firefly's sake, we must get to the bottom of this. Playing it safe seems to be a smarter move. Can I toss a tie and let it decide for me? Playing it safe seems to be In a so smarter move. Insofar as things are presently concerned, yes. But what about the long term? Anyway, be careful out there. There's more than one way to blaze a trail. In a dark forest beset by wolves, ensuring your own escape to safety should be your primary concern. As for the other questions... Did death kill Robin? I'm not sure the two cases were committed by the same culprit, but that massive wound looked like its winged blade. We've all witnessed it in action before. Plus, it seems unlikely that there would be two lethal entities loose in the dreamscape. You think this is connected to Akron? Sorry, I can't answer that question. That ranger is shrouded in mystery. I'm afraid no one is capable of providing an answer. But without a doubt, she is the most special guest at this banquet. It's like Aventurine said just then. It's best to keep your distance from her. Have you noticed anything else unusual? Two victims appearing one after the other in a very short time span. In and of itself, that's very unusual. Two possibilities. The collapse of Panacone's dreamscape has started speeding up. 
making death extremely agitated and weakening the family's protections. Or everything has been planned out and executed by someone. If someone has chosen these victims deliberately, first a smuggler, then a family celebrity, then this murderer's motives are worth thoroughly chewing over. It's all happened so quickly, I can only make conjecture. After leaving here, go have a chat with your companions. I hope you can clarify the source of this confusion. Hopefully. Come, this way. It's a short walk. Don't get lost. <laughs> She's got jokes. This way. This is where we part ways. All of this is like a nightmare. Unfortunately, the remembrance doesn't lie. What we just saw is the reality that happened, and it won't fade from our minds just because we wake up. But follow your heart and don't be afraid. We all walk through this world casting shadows of different lengths, and ultimately, all we leave behind are precious memories. Ah, hold on just a sec. Gently touches the root of your ear, leaving a cool. There you go. Mm. A small parting gift. Well. <laughs> if one day you unfortunately fall into the deep waters of the memory zone and there's no memo keeper to join you, hopefully it can guide you on my behalf. I also pay great attention to the ways of the world. Just think of this as an apology from me for hiding something from you. That's it? I'm kidding. No, that's it? Then, I have something private to take care of regarding that Galaxy Ranger. Let's leave things there, shall we? What fascinating memories will you bring for me next time we meet? I sincerely look forward to them. Hmm. Pom pom sleeping. <laughs> Angel, you still at the hotel? In the dreamscape? Angel, Angel! Have you run into trouble? You got separated in the memory zone, but Angel is with the memo keeper. I feel so antsy. Help! March, stay calm. Do I need to get off the express and help? Not at the moment. Sure. Just let me know if you need me. The Revere Hotel is... The real hotel in the real world is very calm. Not much is happening. Who are you? I'm kidding. I'm done. I faced the investigation on my side. Where should we meet? Angel! Angel, it's great that you're safe. Lay didn't do anything bad, did she? I'm sorry about what happened to Firefly. The scene has been cordoned off by the family. We're wrapping up in in negotiations with some family delegates. Let's meet somewhere near the clock clocky statue later. Okay. A family wrap. Is Himago okay? Too clocky. Yeah, I could have just walked down the street, but I'll just teleport to Clocky. <laughs> so much has happened. I should take a moment to gather my thoughts and wait for everyone to arrive.
that blade oh. now, Ranger. Do you still dream, Hunter? Of those slain by your hand? <sighs> <laughs> it appears the outcome has already been determined. We're still alive, as are you. We still have room to make a choice. Leave the music box behind, and then go. Bloody trail of the destruction leaves no room for hesitation. The Taurus Fire Demon. Even if you sacrifice your life for that eon, you won't get special treatment. Ranger, you'll tread the narrow path of the hunt. You could never understand. We come from the fire, and are born bathed in fire. We spread, burn, and destroy, until all the kindling has burned out and we leave only ashes on the ground. Burning forms the entire life of a fire demon, from the beginning to the end. We are born to die, just to put into practice a profile of another universal truth. All things are created for the destruction. Your companions don't seem to think so. They fight for your chance at survival. They are my children, and just as I was, they are flames that have yet to burn my heart. They're still young, I don't blame them. But my flames are faint, and time is running out. Can you see the planet of festivities in the distance? I plan to bring purgatory with me there, and before that, I must surpass you. Why? Because on the path they have forged, you have traveled farther than I have. Emanator. <sighs> you cannot hide. Your true identity. Draw that sword, for we shall indeed remain here, bound to fight a decisive battle to the death, for I choose this. Destruction is intense, but brief. To gravely cling to life is to endure an endlessly prolonged existence. Even if the answer turns out to be your own destruction? What is important is not the answer, but that it exists, just as you exist. Everything exists to be destroyed. Emanators are no different. Just as even sweet dreams may be born of the void, the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. <sighs> All right. I accept. You shall witness the most brilliant and intense fire in existence. May this flame illuminate the farthest reaches of your bottomless dream.
A bottomless dream. Yes, that's right. But you've made one small mistake. He feels lucky. Welcome. This blade remains in its scabbard not out of pity or scorn. It's a personal secret that I don't want to disclose, but... Perhaps out of reciprocity. I'll reveal the truth to you. The hunt is not the path I truly follow. May death be the end of your boundless dream. Guiding you back to the waking world. I still see them in my dreams. Hold it. Your time hasn't come yet. My time. I've seen many clever disguises that can conceal appearances. But they can never cover up who a person really is. And you're no different. You had no desire to kill the Trailblazer. You only did what you did to drive me and the Memo Keeper away, but... Why? Did Destiny's slave make you do it? You know, Elio. I thought this is just the kind of thing that'd get written into your script. My script has always been brief. Other than that, anything beyond that is unnecessary. He knows my nature. There is but a single destiny from which no one can escape. And until then, I hold the privilege of choice. However, you appear to be ignorant of this. So it's time for me to inquire. Who exactly are you? Not your enemy. Perhaps. That's not what I asked. I don't deserve your curiosity. Loners wandering the cosmos always have their secrets. Take me. I'm wanted by the IPC, so it's little wonder that I know something about the Stellaron Hunters. That's all. Hmm. Maybe I can help. What reason would you have for doing that? I tend to forget things. Which is why, rather than memories, I'm accustomed to using my emotions to capture what I normally wouldn't otherwise. So... I know who is inside that cold armor. <gasps> How about it? Ready to... Take off that armor and sit down for a talk. It's not yet time. I don't need help, but I can give you a suggestion that would make things better for you and me. If your goal is the Watchmaker's legacy, then go look into the family. Not only are they covering up the existence of death, but they're burying the past and the truth about what happens inside the dreamscape. Already on it. And the Astral Express is no enemy of yours. I know that. I just never expected to hear you say it. What's next then? The Trailblazer's been taken by Black Swan. Will you go look for him? No need for that. No harm in mentioning that Elio's only given me one instruction. Get all of the Astral Express to track down the Grand Legacy. I tried settling this in an easier and more direct way. But as you can see, here I am confronting you. I failed can't ever go against the script. 
the so-called impossible hey, is welcome that has yet to Hold happen. On. That's it. Before we split, can I ask you one more thing? Is there anything else in your script about me? I'd like to know what kind of footnote I get to leave in that future foreseen by destiny. Unfortunately, not a thing came up. <laughs> I knew it. Hang on. I... Don't. Don't. What? Your first question was... Do you still have dreams? About everyone who died because of you. Okay. I don't. Thanks for the alert, Mystic. I was born without the ability to dream. I live for this cold, harsh reality. For a little light and to burn to keep on burning until I turn to ash. So I really envy you. Is that so? Then you're already living in the waking world. Gosh, the story is so dark. Like it turned dark. We heard about Miss Firefly from Black Swan. But we never expected Miss Robin to... Oh, I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you then. Reality cruises on in serenity while undercurrents bubble up from the dreamscape. Just like that memo keeper said. Stay strong, everyone. We can still do what we can for them. Starting with finding the murderer. Let's recap everything then. The Trailblazer just reminded me of something. March, do you remember what that family rep who negotiated with us said? Uh, indeed we trust that the Nameless has nothing to do with this. And we also beg each of you to help assist the family in verifying the identity of the deceased. Uh, that's how it was put, in reference to Miss Firefly. Looking back, he seemed a little evasive at the time. And he also failed to mention anything about the earlier murder, too. The family's planning on covering up all news about Miss Robin's death. If news gets out... Hanakoni is going to turn into a bloodbath. But the murder that followed closely after was obviously beyond their anticipation. The family had to try and turn things to their advantage by bringing in reinforcements from outside. The Charmony Festival is nearly here. They must be snowed under. It may also be that Miss Firefly's murder had so many witnesses that it couldn't be covered up. So, they went with the flow, and let more people on the scene to control the situation. After all, the nature of the two murders is fundamentally different. The family's first protective measure should be against malicious actors among the guests, such as that IPC envoy. Aventurine is on guard against Acheron. He was particularly concerned about that galaxy ranger. Are we missing the forest for the trees here? I always felt that Aventurine's reasons for accusing Miss Acheron were highly subtle. Can we believe him? At this point, I'm afraid the only ones we can trust are ourselves. Look, let's try to gather intel first and then list all the possible outcomes we can. Then we go through them, eliminating contradictions one by one. 
The fewer facts remaining, the closer we are to the truth. I've still got this sense of foreboding. It's like we're stuck in a whirlpool, spinning around that legacy even after everything that's happened. Uh, this time we're playing the role of a real detective. But before we start, what are we going to say to the family and adventuring? As I see things, the family harbors no ill will towards the Astral Express. If they didn't trust the crew, they wouldn't have casually commissioned outsiders to investigate a case that's, in all likelihood, a scandal. Plus, this is the family's turf. Teaming up with them should make things easier for us in the future. As for that Aventurine... Welt, I'd like to hear your thoughts. He's complex. He deliberately slow-played his hand during negotiations while running circles around us all the while. He appealed convincingly to both reason and emotion. It wasn't forced, but the intent was obvious. Still, it's good to have contacts among all this uncertainty. Adventurine showed his skills, and as far as our interests are aligned, he can become a reliable ally. We also need to keep a certain distance from the family. Never let them get too close. Teaming up with the IPC helps balance that out. If either side makes a move, we have the option to pull out. So you suggest accepting Aventurine's proposal to team up? Yes. It's risky, but we can only wait until both sides have played their cards before making any further judgments. I get why, but there's a whole lot of bad guys and girls around here, and I'm worried about getting stabbed in the back. <laughs> He's been bullied a few times now, and I can't stand it anymore. She's worried about being stabbed. Everybody keeps talking about when is March going to get stabbed? What? Poor March. I... <laughs> Maybe she'll never... Maybe she won't. Maybe she'll bloom in her own different way. And everybody's thinking so violently of how she could get hurt. Poor Marge. Pat, Pat. Okay, it's fine. Let's focus on the big picture now. It's fine. I got a lot out of him, too. It's cool. You can bully me whenever. <laughs> All right. You know what? It's fine. I got a lot out of him, too. You... <laughs> no! I can't accept this! <laughs> uh, forget about it. Just let me keep an eye on him. If that doesn't work, we can just turn the tables and use him instead. Then, <laughs> could you please reply to Aventurine? Everyone, take this time to put together your thoughts. Honkai Star Rail 50-50 game. Will it or won't it happen? <laughs> yeah, it's just like pulling for your character. Will it happen? Will it? No, this game's good at making you wonder about that. <laughs> well said. Okay. Always open a pull for you. Okay, we'll collaborate. Apparently it's going to make us do it. Wonderful! Your response came faster than I expected. From now on, we'll be able to... We'll all be in this together. Here's a small something for our upcoming partnership. That's it? <laughs> that doesn't seem like much. Give me another 100k, rich boy. <laughs> Let me see what you got! <laughs> Oops, I pressed send too early. Here's a little extra just for good luck with this new gig. And just as anticipated, the family is going to sweep Robin's case under the rug as long as they can. So her case is only a secret between us. But the, the other case, that depends on what excuse they have prepared for you guys. I'll take my leave for now and I look forward to outstanding performance from you guys. You know, trying to trust the IPC or not is a it's like a 50-50 situation. I think they're still trying to also hunt after, you know, the big win like 
It's like... Looks like Aventurine is eh. happy with this outcome. Let's tell everyone about it. Yeah, I'm sure Aventurine's happy about it. But, it, but anyways, I, I just think that, you know, working with the IPC is okay, but not. Okay. Wait, this clocky... Yeah, I gotta bring some goodies eventually. Alright, let's talk to Himiko first. Avengerine's goal is to try and recapture Penacony for IPC. To do this, he'll have to bring down the family in its entirety to create a big enough chance. The existence of death will be covered up by the family. So how does he plan on taking them down? It's gotta be something important enough that everyone will notice. But it also can't be anything too out in the open. Perhaps he's going for the hotel? An attack on the hotel guests? Unlikely. Pinnacone's guests include quite a few bigwigs known throughout the whole cosmos. People who not even the IPC would dare take lightly. Aventurine is a shrewd merchant, and there's no way he doesn't know that. He's going for the family? He's definitely going for the family. And it's just a matter of how. The harmony is strong in Penacony, and almost impossible to take on head to head. The fact that the IPC dispatched Venturine shows that they do not intend to simply play by the book here. Perhaps he's going for Venturine has devoted considerable attention to her. But this Galaxy Ranger. We know hardly anything about her. I can't rush to any conclusions. Himiko, you would think if she really is a uh, May from Honkai Third, you'd think Himiko would remember her. But it's funny that she doesn't seem to. Well, or maybe she hasn't put her finger on it yet. Perhaps he's going after the Astro Twins? Hmm. I was also considering this possibility. Especially because he respects you so much and has sought you out before a few times. Perhaps he's also unsure of your intentions and is probing you. Hmm. I'm just speculating. In any case, we have to be careful when handling Aventurine. He's skilled at reading people and discerning the right moment to strike. Also, He's clearly a born gambler if he's willing to go all in to win. It's all or nothing for Aventurine. Alright, let's talk to Welt. Hello, Welt. It's a gang. Aventurine said something that concerns me. He accused that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever, but said nothing about her connection to that memory zone meme or why he was stalking her. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. Does he have other plans? Does he have other Maybe plans? Venturine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. Two birds, one stone. However, I asked Don Hung back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Aventurine made up out of thin air. You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron? Mm. My thoughts on her. Mm. She's a very gentle woman. She's very mysterious. She's a very powerful woman. But she's a very mysterious woman. She's very mysterious. 
Weird, I can't seem to remember. That fits the stereotype of a galaxy ranger to a T. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. Whatever happens, please don't place all your trust in Aventurine. We cannot afford to be manipulated by him. That's fair to say. I believe that well. I mean, I, I'm not going to put all my trust in Aventurine just because we need to work with him. Alright, March. I hope it's not too soon to bring it up. But I feel like Miss Robin isn't actually dead, but that she's still alive and well. Somewhere. That everything's just some horrible prank. Because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream? How could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this? Shouldn't only good things happen here? <sighs> Whenever I see the Grand Theater, I just can't stop all these thoughts from flooding my head. You think the family's behind all this? No, no. After all, they've brought everyone this sleepy dreamscape, which everyone loves. I just feel like I'm starting to understand them less and less. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us were all outsiders from another world. Aw, what a mess. I really want a nice cool drink of soda to help me calm down. Ah, <sighs> but then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. <sighs> Aw, we all need to give Marsh a hug. Looks like Adventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Himako, what do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that he witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. One thing I'm curious about is, if a person dies in a dream, what happens to them in real life? Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those and we can link up again later. Worth focusing on? Oh. No problem. I'll leave it to you then. Uh-huh. Aw, I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Oh well. Take care then, Mr. Yang. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. Which Yang, Mr. Yang, and Himiko are both from Honkai Impact 3rd mm -hmm. as well. But now... Honored guest, uh, could you come out for a second? Oh my gosh, well, knew that somebody was watching him the whole time. Oh! Ecker! <laughs> he... <laughs> wow. Oh ho ho ho. I'd be embarrassed, too, getting stared out like that. Forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. I believe you've met my colleagues. Welt. Is there something about my name? Hey, more Welt action. We need it. First, don't you want to know my name? I already do, Miss Acheron. You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders. That the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade. And that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Penicone. 
The Annihilation Gang. Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Tragic fate. That Duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. He was a determined and heroic pathstrider. Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that black hole you're wielding? Keen intuition. Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. So you must surely know, Miss Acheron, that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Reveal your true identity uh -oh. and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for gravitational <gasps> disintegration. Oh, well is on it. <laughs> Thank God, well. <laughs> but if it makes the nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron. Those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panacone is solely to fulfill an old, final request. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. Still unwilling to reveal your true <laughs> identity? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Everyone has their own unspeakable past. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions. Such as why the Astral Express is roaming around the cosmos with a Stellaron on board. <sighs> is he okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? He's fine. Let's stick with the topic. Gaining my trust all depends on how much you're willing to reveal. I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. In the process, I gradually came to realize the secret of Panacone may be closely related to the Trailblaze. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. Mm. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion, haven't you? Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. Share your findings with me, and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Well said, Well. Well mm -hmm. said. By the way, would you like something to drink? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? No. Four cups. Four? Try get Because the conversation coming up will last forever. You're gonna make Mr. Yang drunk? I mean, I'm pretty sure he can. <laughs> sure, he can hold himself together. <laughs> the heck? I've been watching her closely for a while now, and the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent, chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. I told her it's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams, only for people allergic to soul glad. And she said, Really? But I don't taste any difference at all between them. The guest rooms are charmingly minimalist. An aesthetic you share, Miss Acheron. It's a cinch, this music box. 
the invitation received by the Annihilation Gang. There are latent memories that linger on it yet. You see, memories of you are not yours alone. They travel in other people, other things. I know much, and I can predict even more. With some help, the dead can be made to speak. Yes. The Annihilation Gang, that band of desperados who all disappeared after meeting you. What exactly happened to them? Well, let me reveal all. I feel like Black Swan is digging too deep. Gradation 12. Dreamscape 12. Father, I dedicate this to you. Well done, Dubra. Wherever they go, shall be met by annihilation. There it is. It's hazy, but it's Ifrit's voice. The other one is probably his progeny. This is the residual memory from when the invitation was first delivered. They were abruptly interrupted. Then, what happened next is... They sought refuge in the land of sleep. Merely wishing for undisturbed rest, away from the storms. Children of the flame, this marks your right of Passage. She won't be necessary. I alone am enough. Shh. When have those on the path of destruction fear death? The Everflame Mansion has set out on a journey. Those poor people. They have no idea what lies in wait ahead of them. Memory recovery is going well, but slowly. She'll be here soon, and time is short. There's nobody else here, so there's no need to be delicate. In fact, I think I'd better go all out. Who is she talking to? Has nobody not noticed this? <laughs> I know she's not talking to her herself. It, what I happened? She's really connecting to somebody. The memory after that is blank. How is that possible? This music box fell into Acheron's hands and she brought it to Panacone. That's a fact, and that's how it should have gone. But along the way... It's like it's been erased. Who's done this? Who are you? Uh-oh. Who are you? It's... No. Is this not a memory? Oh. A memo keeper. Do you serve the Garden of Recollection? Or the Cremators? My name is Constance. A pleasure to meet you. We were supposed to meet at Pentagoni and spend a... <laughs> unforgettable time together. But that seems unrealistic. Dolly is not welcome on the banquet star, and I don't need a coming of age ceremony. And you, I know what you're looking for. Want her secret? I can give it to you, and then you can enjoy the banquet for me. I wish you unforgettable memories. Black Swan, be careful. Oh. Hmm. A phone. Wanna listen?
listen in. A few days ago, the IPC made an announcement. Under the watchful guidance of the Marketing Development Department and in accordance with the Interstellar Peace Charter, the independent Sigonian sovereignty has hereby been established and shall take a legislative seat at the Interstellar Congress. The formation of the Sigonian sovereignty is of great historical significance to the Sigonia system. This move puts an end to the planet's long and bloody history turning the sensational Kataka Avgen extinction event into a distant memory. Sigonia 4 is located in an unclaimed zone at the intersection of the Denise, Pruthian, and Dorno star clusters. The planet's surface environment is known for being extremely harsh, constantly faced with the threat of impact from small-scale celestial objects. This is why very few intelligent species have made this planet their home, dividing themselves into several tribes to eke out nomad lifestyles as they struggle to survive the arid desert wilderness. They have developed their own folk beliefs that are independent of the Eon belief system. Sigonia. Sigonia. Ravenous eye of the storm, spurned by all the gods. Land of rock, but not water. Lightning, but not rain. Blood, but not tears. You beat us with your falling stars. You lash us with wind and storm. You chew us up with the cracked earth. You promised us a land of honey, yet yoked us beneath a sword of bitterness. Oh, Gyathra Triclops, if thou can hear me, please open up thy three eyes and gaze upon this child. When you took his father, my child was still sleeping in my belly. And where my husband went, I too soon must go. I don't ask for a peaceful death, just for you to tell me. Does the baby swaddled sweetly asleep? Does he dream of his mother's heartbeat and the sound of falling rain? Please tell me whether this life is all just a fleeting dream. Otherwise, why would this child be born to face impending death? Mm. Mommy, the rain! It's raining! Raining? <gasps> raining! <gasps> it is raining! It's true! Those outworlders weren't lying to us. They really did summon the rain. Mommy, we can leave here. We can go back home. Back home. Gyathra Triclops. <laughs> you came. <laughs> Do you hear that? <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. This is the sound of rain. 
<laughs> On the day you were born, the sky also sent down a gift like this from Gayathra. <laughs> Such a lucky child. Such a blessed child. Just like your name. A gift from them to Avgen. <gasps> My boy. <laughs> May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Keep your blood eternally pulsing. Let your journey be forever peaceful. And your schemes forever concealed. <gasps> Welcome to this sad world, Kakavasha. Time to wake up, gambler. <laughs> oh, heavens. <laughs> that Dr. Ratio? Uh, I must have drunk too much soul glad. Uh, didn't expect you to be back so soon. How is it? Find anything? Just as anyway. you guessed. Nobody outside knows about Robin's death. There aren't even baseless conspiracy theories. They're still streaming the rehearsal for her ceremony. Using a stand-in, I guess. <laughs> they must be dreaming. Of course. <laughs> Who could imagine that death would actually descend upon the idyllic dream created by the family? <laughs> Let alone that the victim would be the female lead of the Charmony Festival. To be honest with you, I didn't believe it. I even tested it a few times myself. Until I discovered that I couldn't actually die. <laughs> Whenever there's any danger, I'm forced awake by the dream pool, and it's all as if everything were just a nightmare. Wow. That's why I'm convinced that there are a few big secrets lurking behind the scenes. Then you must have heard about the Memory Zone meme. When I graciously deigned to establish connections with the Oak family on your behalf, they were quite in a pitiful state of disarray. Besides Robin, there was another body. I don't know the exact details, just that it was a stowaway. Two murder cases? <laughs> I told you something seemed off about the Nameless. Uh, he must have come across the other one. <laughs> this murderer is a psycho. But I have to admit, the case should be easy to crack. We can leverage the family's malfeasance and let the IPC use this as a reason to intervene. It's just that their trickery runs deeper than I thought. Robin's stand-in was all ready to go. These two murders are definitely getting hushed up. What should we do? Let me think. It's too rare an opportunity to miss out on, so I gotta be careful. Incredible gambler. Have you already exhausted your limited repertoire of tricks so soon? <laughs> wow. Well, there are plenty of chips, but it'd be best to choose carefully. The most straightforward has to be Robin. Remember? That masked fool once told me to find a mute as a friend. Robin is what she calls the mute. She has lost her voice, and while most people can't pick up on it, you and I cannot mistake that sound. Not produced by any voice box, but rather by the resonance of the harmony. If that girl hadn't gone hoarse from singing practice, there'd only be one possibility. Something was up with the family. Or Robin herself. To get to the bottom of this, I tried every way I could to meet her. But she died. Right before my very eyes. Mm. A complete and utter loss. 
Incidentally, it seems to have resulted in your rather undignified arrival on the interrogation stand. There were eyewitnesses at the scene, and the family, in their graciousness, has tentatively accepted your alibi. However, for the foreseeable future, you shall, regrettably, find yourself under the vigilant watch of the Hounds. Well, things aren't looking too optimistic, Doctor. I'm starting to break out in a cold sweat. D do you reckon... There's still any chance of a comeback, given how things are. Do you reckon? A probability. Yes, it exists, but it verges on the infinitesimal. To phrase it in a matter more befitting the vernacular of Penacony, you're dreaming. But if you simply can't control yourself and want to try your hand, then there just so happens to be a suitable candidate. Uh-oh. That man wants to see you again. Who? No. Sunday. <sighs> oh. Is this a public hearing or a private trial? If it were the former, it would hardly befit my stature to stoop to the role of a mere messenger. Ooh. He doesn't <sighs> like that. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. It's all great. You see, the dead can't talk, but the living can. Ratio, I'm convinced now that there must be something wrong inside the family. Oh, <laughs> just you wait and see. That man's sister has died. He can't sit on his hands. Well, without any further ado, let's set off. Lead the way. The show is about to begin. Lead the way, he says. If he said fall the way. The Dewlite Pavilion is the Oak family's fortress and a place where heads of the families meet to discuss great plans for Panacone. Fortress? <laughs> well, I like this metaphor. I dealt with the warlords of the Amanica star system not long ago, and their synchronized orbital manner wasn't this heavily guarded. This mansion normally belongs to Sunday and is very befitting of its owner. Without his express invitation, the likes of ordinary guests would never grace these grounds in their lifetimes. Look around while you still have this moment of freedom. Hey, Doc, whose side are you on anyway? Who's to say I won't sell you out? Dear God, woo, time we'll see. <laughs> When we meet the authoritarian master of the Oak family, I'll pry an answer out of him. Follow me and I'll bring you to his parlor. Hold your tongue and let me deal with the members of the family. Oh my. Okay, Dr. Raytheon. Oh my, we got a new little thing here. Fate assemble. Okay. As the story unfolds, you will have the chance to progress the story from other characters' point of view. When entering the characters' point of view for the first time, the characters will automatically be placed first in your team. Ooh! You can check the Fates Atlas interface to see which characters' point of view an ongoing mission or completed mission is in. Okay. If you need to change your point of view to continue the story, you can select here to enter Fate Assemble for more detail. We see tutorial. Okay. So we're venturing. Oh, I see. So I can switch back to the Trailblaze and back to this. Interesting. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. We can see his uh, animation. Hold on. Wait, can we also see his card too? No. Thank God. So close, but so far. Oh my gosh, he's putting perfume on. <laughs> oh, wow. And then. Wow. That is so cool. Just to see his animation. 
And his little stuff. Look at his clothing. It looks awesome. I know he's another character. Uh, Five-star character, I believe. Yes. And uh, he's coming out. So I'm looking forward to that. What a magical guy. <laughs> Alright. There probably is another animation, but I'll wait. Wait, wait. He's gonna attack? Oh! He summons dice! Okay, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. This is hardly enough for a seat at the table. Dang! You're doing the snap thing. Okay, I got you. Alright. Hey, you two! That's a place of business. Looks like a no Moogle. Entry. But human. I was requested by Mr. Sunday to bring him the suspect. My name is Ratio. He should have mentioned it to you. Oh, I remember you. Veritas Ratio. Your punch virtual particle clock is impressive. Excuse me? Uh, the one on your head. Of course, it's nothing compared to my full pocket dimensional annihilating power armor of the Mobile Knights. Right, and as I mentioned, that fantasy raiment of yours doesn't exist. That's because you can't see it. Like I say, only family can see the glory of the Mobile Knights. Ugh, enough. Get going. Don't keep Mr. Sunday waiting. <sighs> it seems like the idiocy index here <laughs> is no better than it is out there. Oh, why? Ugh, enough. Get going. Hey, don't keep Mr. Sunday waiting. Bye. But there's a treasure box. No! The treasure box! <laughs> the door is shut tight. Looks like we're on our own. I mean, there isn't a door. How did you get in before? For security reasons, the family built the administrative site deep in the dreamscape, with the mechanisms hidden in these Nightingale statues. The direction of the statues can be controlled. On the previous occasion, an attendant named Kona had gone to the side room to verify something before setting the statues in the correct positions. Maybe we should do the same. Let's go and take a look. Of course, we can also use brute force. Where's this? No reward with no risk? I'll take it. <laughs> I figure I might as well look around. Wouldn't it be funny if I get this all right just without trying? Solving a problem by brute force doesn't prove your intelligence. Fine. The side room. Don't <laughs> let me repeat myself. Fine. Okay, Dr. Ratio. I'm sorry. Side room. The man, he's like... But I wanted to do it all right. Okay, so I see a parrot. I'm guessing. Right? Left?
playing clues. Of course, there's an enemy there. Feeling lucky. Well, at least we get to see the attacks. An elusive foretelling. Ill fate is dead. <laughs> I hit the mark. I see. So. Provides all allies with the shield. Okay. Opportunity doesn't knock. It's on me. Some value, I suppose. Oh, that's all I can't get. Okay. Existence is unity. I mean, I have her, and yet here I'm not even playing it right for a minute. Destiny <laughs> is apparent. <laughs> Brain thinks faster than me reading it. Ill tidings manifest. I hit the mark. <laughs> There's more to life. Eternal. You chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> Destiny isn't chosen. Ill fate is dead. Sure, I'll play along. Spend freely. What a good team, really. <laughs> this is hardly enough for a scene. Eternal sleep is not the dead return! Memories are ever changing. Beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. Ill tidings manifest. Hedge your bets. It's on me. Some the dice have been bust. cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Existence is unity. No dirty tricks, all right. <laughs> Ill fate is dead. Play along. Spend freely. Okay. I'm actually having fun playing him. Super fun. <laughs> Just shoot from there, you're done. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Every petal in life's garden, all will be swept away by the wind. Destiny is apparent. Ill tidings manifest. It's on me. There's more to life. Nightingales facing in different directions. An obvious hint. Mm. But are these nightingales? They are. 
What's wrong? How can nightingales be so huge? <laughs> they look more like torment eagles to me. There are no eagles in the five families, only nightingales. <sighs> Why am I wasting time with you on this? Takes for the door to open is returned to the statue to its original position. Just as I thought. Here's the correct answer. A truly miraculous discovery. Perhaps I should offer you the chance to join the Genius Society. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I thought you'd given up on that already. I was being sarcastic. Can't you tell? <laughs> the dry sense of humor there, Dr. Ratio. Sunday. All I'm hearing is the Oracle. Impressive. <laughs> well, so much for Mr. Sunday's reserved, virtuous image. Do you need me to remind you? We're in a dreamscape. No matter how grand the mansion looks, it'll not affect Penacony. Stop wasting your time nitpicking the family here. Yeah, you're right. The only way to destroy the family is death. <laughs> Sunday must have thought the same. Let's head down. <sighs> I'm gonna have too much fun with this character when I get it. A door here. Destiny is apparent. Ill fate to say. Sure, I'll play along. Spin freely. No dirty tricks, alright. <laughs> Watch your head. There's more to life. Eternal. You chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> Pretty easy. Clocky. Okay. Gotta 
be <laughs> when, when your brain thinks about these puzzles and I just love I love these puzzles they keep evolving over the years no reward but no risk I'll take it <laughs> alright I need to investigate that room because it is gonna make me curious if I don't Aw, okay. Well, it didn't hurt to try. <laughs> Hi, nice ambush. <laughs> nice try with that ambush. Not the end. The dead return. Memories are ever changed. Beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. Head your bets. It's on me. Chose the wrong enemy. Uh oh. Ah. Uh -oh. Uh. oh no, you don't. Oh, you wanna you wanna do it together? Woo! Nice try. It's like use the defense first and then that. Uh, I mean, I Destiny could have probably stood there. Every petal in my <laughs> all will be swept away by the wind. Stood there and uh, let him hit, try to hit because it wouldn't work anyways. Memories are ever beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Alright. Spend freely. Some value, I suppose. Yeah. Destiny isn't chosen. Ill fate descend. What do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. Sure, I'll play along. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. It's on me. No dirty. Oh. Dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. <laughs> oh man, I'd love this. Watch your head. <laughs> There's more to life. <laughs> I'll see you off. <laughs> Ill fate to say. No dirty tricks, all right. Uh -huh. Wow. Powerful team. All right. I see birds. Blink. Blink. Duan, do. But is oh okay well if I forgot I got this little thing up here. <laughs> I think I hear something. Ugh, what is my statue completely bare, chirp? How could you pull out all of my grass? I have to report this to Ven. Okay, Vendred. came from uh, 
upstairs. A lot of birds. I mean, not that this matters, but I can... Yeah, that's what I was like. It would be nice if that actually not only recovers HP, but MP as well. How many times people did that? <laughs> How did you find me when I hit so well? Uh, I think I hear something. Further away, being particularly hidden, chirp. Next time I'll remember to hide somewhere even sneakier. Don't forget to come and find me again. Hmm. Will this loop me? Let's see if it loops. Okay, and there's a puzzle. These are fun. Hmm. Okay. Sure, this is gonna be okay. put this back for now. I thought putting the edges in usually helps, but I think I'll just focus on the outside first. Let's see here. <laughs> this is hardly enough for a seat at the table. Freely. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Oh. Eternal sleep. The dead return. <laughs> Nothing major. Every petal in life's garden all oh, well. will be swept away by the wind. <laughs> Destiny isn't chosen. Uh. <laughs> what do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. <laughs> oh. Memories are ever beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Okay. And then treasure chest over here. is hardly enough for a seat at the table. More puzzles. Interesting. <sighs> A 
An elusive foretelling. Ill fate to say. Enjoying yourself? It's on me. Elder, watch your head. Nice try. Destiny the dice is have been cast. Bust? Or maybe I'll take it off! Ill tidings manifest! Spend freely. Chose the wrong end. <laughs> Some value. <laughs> Ill fate to said. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Every petal in life's garden, all will be swept away by the wind. Eternal sleep. The dead return. It's on me. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Easy peasy, lamb and squeezy. Existence is unity. Destiny isn't chosen. Ill tidings manifest. Really good. This is so good. You can like easily clear everything with this. Pretty fun. Okay, so we got another little loop thing over there. A bird. No reward, but no risk. I'll take it. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. We don't have a choice. That's fine. Finish that last puzzle piece. Look at that, there's Robin. He's so pretty. for a seat at the table. I think we can interact with this bird. Oh, 
Oh, you can switch. Good. Wait, can I switch my teams? Oh, I can. Oh, that's really helpful. <laughs> I mean, I love the team that I got with him right now. Extremely helpful. Got ice. Hmm. I'm gonna stick with my team for now. I mean, my team's going what great with him. I'm not complaining. Ill tidings manifest. Hedge your bets. Spend freely. <sighs> it's funny because this whole time I actually thought these were like um backup team. <laughs> Ill fate is dead. Sure, I'll play along. Memories are ever beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Huh? I underestimated you. Eternal sleep. The dead return. <laughs> Some value, I suppose. The dice have been cast. I think I better cast it on that. I mean, it's probably useful for both, but I'll use Bust. it on him. Or maybe I'll take it off. Chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> I hit the mark. It's on me. Ill fate is dead. Uh. Oh. Uh. Memories are ever changing. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss! Enemy you chose the wrong enemy. Didn't even stand a chance. Every petal in all will be swept away by the wind. <laughs> Destiny isn't chosen. Ill fate is dead. I hit the most. Memories are ever beneath the water. Lies an endless abyss. Me. The dice have been 
cast. Bust? Or maybe I'll take it off! You off. <laughs> what do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. Hedge your bets. Spend free. Go one more time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nothing. Eternal sleep. The dead return. I suppose. Yeah. Ill fate is dead. Sure, I'll play along. Existence is unity. You chose the wrong enemy. Every petal in life all will be swept away by the wind. <laughs> Destiny isn't chosen. Ill tidings manifest. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. If I knew I was gonna fight these guys, I probably would have definitely used a uh -huh. different team. They're attacking Lanka. They know where the healer is. Alright. <laughs> Return on. Hedge your bets. Eternal sleep. The dead return. Spend freely. The dice have been kept bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. What do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. Yeah. I'll see you off. <laughs> Death. Uh, Just gonna use you basic attacks uh -huh. for now. Uh. What? <laughs> Yeah. Let's settle this. <laughs> it's on me. Death. Uh. <laughs> Here we go. Double the doink. <laughs> All right. I think I will trade in. Uh, like she does great with the extra attacks too. Just debating if I want to really get rid of Ron May. She's so great, though. Um, probably use that. Just have fun with the ice. Okay, I got disoriented where I'm going. Memories are ever chained. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. What do you want to know? Ill fate is dead. I hit the mark. <laughs> Destiny isn't chosen. Ill tidings manifest. <laughs> Nothing major. <laughs> Eternal sleep the dead return! Sure, I'll play along. Spend freely. What? Uh. There we go. Do not concern yourself with the outcome.
see him. Okay, what else is here? Is that a box? Oh, I see. Be a lot of hiding, teleporting, <laughs> treasure chest. Yeah. I was like, is that a bird upside down? But it was. Alright. Morph into our little guy. I'm not too sure his rotation, but it looks like he goes back and forth. Maybe if I'm fast enough. Nope. Should've took that chance. <laughs> That's okay. Just gotta wait for him. Bazooka! A boss stone... Boss, uh, boss stone's minions will experience true calamity when Hanmu, Hanu gets his Hanu launcher. After taking aim at the enemy, hitting the fire button will unleash Hanu's rocket and consume ammunition. Enemies will drop ammo after being defeated. If one round of ammo hits multiple enemies, more ammo is dropped at once. If Brother Hanu has no more ammo left, you can return to Hanu Launcher's position to unlock the Hanu <laughs> rocket again and repelish one ammo. What if I don't need to use the rocket? Can I hit more than one enemy with that? I think it's all about that timing. I'll wait for it. I can. Give me that. Thank you. Okay, I'll wait for that. Use the Hanu rocket to ignite the firework, it will trigger an explosion that defeats enemies and is even capable of destroying walls. That's so. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, please don't spot me.
go. Lovely. Wowie, okay. Oh, we need to get that. And I made it to this thingy, Majigger. Think I'm a bob? Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need it later. Well, at least I unlocked it early. That I didn't mean to do, but I did. Okay. Now we just gotta get back. I had too much fun exploring. Okay. This door is locked. My friend? Did you really make an appointment with him? It's a trial. You got to prove your worth to Sunday before you can speak with him. If I'm not wrong, we need to find a way to open this door in the hall or this place will be our prison. Oh, an escape room. <laughs> My favorite. Get serious. I've no time for games. Let's head back. The hint is probably in that prominent sandpit. Or it could be oh, that wow. key. That's an enormous sandpit. I'd love to build a tall building for myself. Once I have enough savings. I don't know why I keep wanting to see oh, his look. sets. <laughs> There's a noticeable gap in the model. I believe you're right. There wasn't a gap before. That man must have done it intentionally. Well, with your brilliant mind, you shouldn't have any trouble recalling what was here last time. Right, Doctor? Of course. Let's look around. When I see it, I will know it. Fine, fine. Why do I feel that we're pursuing a degree in burglary now? <laughs> Pretty sure I know where it is. Found it. This is it. Lucky for me, I can get there. I enjoyed the character so much that I didn't realize how I easily unlocked the area where I needed to go. Arch. <laughs> well, I'm amazed you can remember something this tiny. 
tiny. You know, this reminds me of a tunnel I once saw that could shrink people who passed through it. If I were you, I would shut my mouth. It's wise to remain silent when you should. This reminds me of one of those building toys. You know, with the blocks. <laughs> I've never played with them before. I wonder if it's more interesting than stacking chips. Oh, look. The gap is closed. And it fits perfectly. <laughs> so, what's next? in a dream? Indeed. Oh, doctor, you're Oh huge. my gosh. Yeah, doctor, you're you're it's me. pretty tall there. Down here. Don't in eat the, me. The sand pit. Oh, actually, I think we could make this work for us. Just find a way to slip me into Sunday's collar and I'll infiltrate the family just like <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, fine. I was just kidding. Let's find a way to open the door. Honey, I shrunk the kids. I'm kidding. Oh, it would have been cool to see Dr. Ratio. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh, Dr. Ratio! <laughs> I'm small. I'm kidding. Can I ask the one question why that one guy was kind of like, yeah, him. It's not every day you see that. Just... Alright. Is there a door here that we don't know about? <laughs> Alright. I see a Hanwu thing around here too. Hello, I'm the Industrial Pride. Wait. Is this supposed to do that? They're walking in place. Okay, well clearly the enemies are walking just great. Okay. Wait! He's T-posing above the champagne! What? Oh my gosh, what am I looking at here? Wait... I knew T-Pose was the dominant pose, but... Hot, 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 hot. Wow. <sighs> what the? So this is like a whole new entire map in itself. Is that a book? Oh, treasure. Oh my goodness. Yep. I've seen it all. I think I've officially seen it all. Okay. And we got 
some monsters over there. <sighs> All right. A few paintings. for a minute. Hello, I'm an NPC. Well, yeah, I think we kind of figured that out. The T pose, though, is just. <sighs> That's a big bird over there! Wait, where did. be more creepy if Dr. Rachel was watching me as I was walking. But he's not. Immersion ruined! <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is pretty cool though. Gotta admit. Alright, TikTok. Alright, so we gotta help him get fixed. thing trips me up sometimes because it's like I gotta remember because it's all about duplicating this oh I see I forgot I see you can move this too <laughs> I forgot all about that <laughs> I was like why can't I move this but then now I just realize why oof probably Dr. Rachel's like that's okay, that's why I'm on this journey with you. It's not your fault. TikTok, I listen to the song. Feels better. Alright. Cuckoo. Oh, crazy. Alright. I could be happy just watching a giant Dr. Ratio from here. And a giant bird that's right, like, kind of beside him, but not really beside him. Dr. Ratio! <laughs> okay. Pick up all the puzzles. With the T posing. Hello! What? Welcome to the Golden Hour base model. And it talks. I am an Oak soldier. I will be here to guide you through the tour of the base model. Happy to be of service. Hmm. Tell me about the guide uh, tour? And tell me about the tour. Hello! Welcome to the Golden Hour base model. I am an Oak Soldier. I will be here to guide you through the tour. The base mall. Okay. Give it a kick. All right, tell me about the tour. Happy to be of service. 
generating guide. Please wait patient. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You know the actors are paid well when they start doing that. <laughs> Tell me about the store. Found the nearest check-in spot. Please look behind me. A capsule ma a sheen model. <laughs> Aww, his hard efforts. What's up with that? Now the family's toys are trying to frame me? I didn't do a thing to it, Doc. You've got to be my witness. <laughs> I saw. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw nothing. Lies. I didn't do it. I didn't even kick it. I was just amused. My eyes are burning now and for eternity. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That was that was really good. I like that. Alright, time machine capsule. Oh, capsule machine. <laughs> There's no mechanism on the floor. Could there be one at the top? Doctor! Do me a favor. Wow. So, I was right. These models have interiors that look exactly like the real buildings. The only difference is that no one lives in them. Funny that Sunday puts a miniature that makes him seem like a giant by comparison. Right where he can see it, first thing in the morning. <laughs> Insecure much? <laughs> that was kind of cool, seeing a giant hand of Dr. Ratio. The bird! It moved! Wait, no, they were up there before, I just didn't pay attention. What the heck? Alright, I don't know why this looks like a thumbnail shot worthy, but it is. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna screenshot this. Hold on. I gotta do it. Too bad I don't have uh what you call it, March's phone. <laughs> okay, hold on, there we go. <laughs> that is funny. All right. I'm just waiting for this game to probably end up doing some PT stuff and I'll be like, wait a minute. Like it almost did the PT thing like earlier with the doors, but like maybe some little things we were not expecting in here and it will do it. Again, the T pose this in the ground. <laughs> Okay, I figure we had to fight these guys. Okay, let me get... No, you don't. The dice have been cast. I mean, Bust. works for me. Or maybe I'll take it off. Oh man. 
sure. I'm still laughing know. about the uh memories are ever beneath the water lies an endless large fear. version of a, of Dr. Ratio. Alright, let's All just get it. Be revealed in lunar flame. <laughs> Unworthy. You chose the one. <laughs> Bye. What do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. You can't kill me. Watch your head. Hedge your best. I'm actually glad he it's punched him, but yeah. Because I didn't want my other characters to get hurt. <laughs> One bit. Nowhere to run. Do not concern yourself with the outcome. Oh, one of the fragments flew upstairs. I'll need to use the pinball machine to flick myself up there. Wait, is Dr. Ratio gonna flick me? It's tough. You know, I think every day when you see this guy laying here, it's like your everyday friend. Be like, oh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> Oh, great. There's another pinball machine base here. And it's empty, too. Doc! I'll need your brain power again. There's no need to yell, I can hear you. The pinball machine must be hidden somewhere in the hall. Like the arch. Wait here, and I'll be back... I love how he teaches you to tell you to wait patiently. He's, he's, he's like a strict dad-father moment. Wait here, and I'll be back. Okay. <sighs> Finally, a moment of peace. Hey, we're not that loud, are we? Are we? Am I? <laughs> Don't answer that. A moment with Dr. Ratio. And my character switched back to the wrong May. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Dr. Ratio! I believe I have your card, Dr. Ratio. Too bad they don't. Uh, let you have your own. But that's fine. I mean, he better be doing some damage over time. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I won't bark. That's it. Pleasant moments of solitude are always fleeting. No guards. Oh, you're back. Just place it here. Thank you. Wow. Okay, Starrell knows how to make you happy. Alright, so connect the dots.
There we go. Oh, Ratio, you should come in here and take a look. The view here is breathtaking. <laughs> Honestly, you could easily squash me with just a pinch. If that is your wish, I will do so without a moment's hesitation. Oh my gosh, please don't. <laughs> but then again, it's okay, Dr. Rachel, I'll accept it. Just just don't overly do it quickly. I love how he's thinking in that same spot. It would have been kind of fun if, like I said, if his eyes moved at the same time. Puzzle piece. Uh, all done. Piece of cake. Be a bird. Yank. Up. Empire. Uh, Most annoying thing about idiot birds is that you can't explain the concept of an idiot bird to them, chirp. We have always found each other tedious is their disease of stupidity. Is this a bird of a doctor ratio bird? <laughs> that is right, I shall be the one to do so. I am the truth bird. Is that a bird song I hear somewhere? Here we go. Okay. Did it matter which way I went? Oh, look at that, there's a floating head over there. Changing beneath the water lies an endless abyss. All will be revealed in the lunar flame. I hit the mark. Spin freely. Eternal sleep. The dead return. Tedious. Later. Overkill. Uh, all done. Piece of cake. Except you missed one. <laughs> Ooh, what a bully. Telling. Sure, I'll play along. It's on me. Stand down. You chose the wrong enemy. Receive divinity. Destiny's hand has truly blessed me. Watch your head. Mind your manners. Ill fate is dead. Uh, all done. 
piece of cake. Mm, cake. Somewhere nearby, you hear a strange disturbance. You could tell that whoever is making the noise is huge, light footed, and perhaps even a little drunk. The sound seems to be coming from above you. However, looking up, you see nothing but an empty billboard. It's like there's an invisible dream floating above you. Maybe it's just your imagination. But it's not! Okay. Okay, well, why don't I try to get it on the other side? Let's do that first. And then go back in. Be another way to get over there. I'm not too sure if this has anything to do with uh because it looks like it may be another alternate path. But I could go back around. Hold on. Oops, wait a minute. There we go. Okay, let me let me go back over. Okay, right. So there's a dead end. Hmm. Puzzles. Good old puzzles. Right, I'll just go back. It's not like I won't be able to find it, it's just I'm going to go back for now. What happens when you start puzzles, you gotta, you gotta use the brain. Toy City has come to an end. Hmm, makes me feel sad. Hmm, Panacone isn't all bad, right? I'll use this interesting experience as a talking point at the poker table.
What if I never use any eyes? I'd be in trouble, wouldn't I? <laughs> All right. It's a pity you made it out of the sand pit alive. Wow. Sunday is just beyond this door. From my limited understanding, he's not someone easily handled. Are you prepared? Yeah. Only I believe he's the one who should be prepared to face me. Tell me about your plan. I don't have a plan. I'll just play it by ear. There are only two kinds of bargaining chips when dealing with people. Benefit or fear. Looks like sincerity isn't in your dictionary. Am I not sincere enough? <laughs> There's no need to emphasize it. We've got to make good use of death. That man's sister is dead. He won't be able to turn a blind eye, and that's fear. And I'll help him find the murderer. He can't do it due to his status and position, but I can. And that's benefit. On what basis do you believe he's incapable, necessitating the delegation to someone from a rival faction, the IPC? Simple. Because that murderer could very well be a traitor hiding inside the family. <laughs> um, do you mean the Galaxy Ranger whom you accused previously? That was just an excuse, good doctor. There's something wrong with that woman, and we need someone who can keep her in check. It's better to minimize the variables outside our control while we execute our plans. Moreover, I need to know her identity. If I'm lucky, <laughs> she could be an important pawn. And it's good to have more helpful friends when dealing with this matter. But honestly, the murder case is likely unrelated to her. I believe my standpoint. There's a rat in the family. Otherwise, why would Mr. Sunday arrange a private meeting with us? This isn't an interrogation, but a secret negotiation. We'll see. Using Robin's death as a bargaining chip, I'll win back my freedom and power. In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death if the chance of winning is just beyond this door even if that chance is close to zero well <laughs> you can't win if you don't play right ah the charming audacity to think that you of all people might emerge victorious dear gambler Three chips are enough. All or nothing. It seems my puzzles are too effortless for you, IPC Ambassador. I appreciate your words. And I see you put a lot of effort into welcoming me, Mr. Sunday. However, this is no way to greet a guest. Well, this isn't an invitation, but a summoning. Before we speak, I need to test your character. I imagine this knowledgeable doctor friend of yours has been of great help, yes? Certainly. You ought to know this better than I do. He's already faithfully fulfilled his duties, hasn't he? Yes, the doctor has assured me of your noble character. He considers you, like himself, a virtuous person who can be trusted by the family. I have come to know you very well as a person, Mr. Aventurine. You're diligent, generous, and willing to cooperate. The fact that you succeeded in overcoming many obstacles just to meet me gave me the reason to believe in your wisdom and courage. But there's one thing I must ask you. That is, you've used your wisdom at the wrong place to meet the wrong person and put yourself in a situation where you shouldn't be. 
witnessing a tragedy that shouldn't have happened. Oh, you don't look too well. Am I making you anxious? If not, then it means I'm on your side. If I wasn't mistaken, you'd just made a serious accusation against the family. No, you weren't mistaken. For depravity is creeping in around you. There's no need for us to be evasive. Let's talk about your sister. Your sister's talent is unrivaled in the world of show business. As you know, her voice has been out of tune since she returned to Penacony. What's more disheartening, she can't sing anymore. Who could be responsible for this? Many suspect the culprit is among the outsiders, but I know you hold a different opinion. Now your noble status has become a shackle, preventing you from apprehending the murderer and avenging your sister's death. You're feeling anxious because you're out on a limb. But don't worry. I'm on your side. I'm immensely honored by your concern for me, Mr. Aventurine. Since you're so selfless and generous, I believe you wouldn't ask for anything in return, would you? Well, naturally, you wouldn't incur any loss from this. I just want to reclaim what is mine. My liberty, and the personal items under the family's custody, the bag of gift money, and... The box in which the cornerstone is stored. That's right. Cornerstone. I've heard it's a treasured asset of the strategic investment department. A sacred stone that seals the preservation emanator, granting significant power and every liquidation specialist holds one. For an object so precious, it probably comes at an even higher price than other forms of recompense. Well, I'm sure you're aware of the high level of risk I'll be undertaking to bring the truth to light. Mr. Aventurine, when you are out and about, do you always make adjustments to your appearance? Your tie should be on the center line, your shirt must not protrude from your vest. Your trouser creases should be perfectly straight and always aligned with the tips of your shoes. Of course. But I don't, because it's not appropriate to do so in public. You should make sure everything is presentable and in order before leaving the house. I'm not the kind that takes risks. The cornerstone must be in the custody of the family. No room for negotiation. Please, don't let me turn you down twice. Sure, the gift money is good enough. I suppose you wouldn't mind that. After all, a merchant can't function without a bargaining chip. You compromised quicker than I thought. Unfortunately, it's a gambler that needs a bargaining chip, not a merchant. I can give you your gift money. But before that, I want you to tell me. The fact that you can decisively forsake the box you asked for? What exactly is stored in it? Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. But why? <sighs> what have you done? Under the light of the harmony, all wickedness is revealed. I implore them to shed their light, and I'll ask you questions on their behalf. Next, you have 113 seconds to prove your innocence and gain my trust. And if I refuse to answer? You can try. And we'll see if the Harmony rejects you. <laughs> Question. Do you own a cornerstone? Yes. What a simple answer. You, too, understand that idle chatter leads only to poverty. 
Did you hand over the cornerstone to the family when you entered Panacomi? Yes. Does the cornerstone you handed over to the family belong to you? Yes. Is your cornerstone in this room right now? Yes. Is your memory free from any kind of tampering or deletion, encompassing but not restricted to the techniques of the Garden of Recollection? Yes. Are you an Avgen from Sigonia? Yes. You even know about that? Do the Avgens have any ability to read, tamper with, or manipulate one's own or another's mind? No. Does it matter? Do you love your family more than yourself? Whoa. Yes. All the Avgens were killed in a massacre. Am I right? No. Are you your clan's sole survivor? <laughs> Perhaps. Do you hate and wish to destroy this world with your own hands? <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. Now. The final question. Can you swear that at this very moment, the Aventurine Stone is safe and sound in this box? Looks like we can get an answer. Open it, Mr. Aventurine. It's your last chance to defend your honor. <laughs> Are these what you're looking for? <laughs> Since you came as promised, learned doctor. Does this mean that you are willing to take the side of the family in this farce? What makes you think you can convince me? I've heard you haven't enjoyed Mr. Aventurine's company. I also understand that you're an avid learner who sees the pursuit of knowledge above all. In that case, you ought to realize that a competent scholar knows their position and wouldn't forsake more vital matters for the sake of petty pride. If you agree to assist the family, I'll share our research findings on the Stellaron. You must be quite aware that, besides the family, no other faction is willing to share such information. Hmm. Cut to the chase. What do you need from me? I need Mr. Aventurine's comprehensive plan. Haven't you confiscated his cornerstone? You can't expect a featherless bird to take flight. But I've also heard the ten elites in the Strategic Investment Department have united, progressing together in the interests of the IPC. You'll have to speak more clearly than that. <sighs> the cornerstone which Mr. Aventurine surrendered. Was it really his? 
<laughs> you question whether he would entrust you with someone else's cornerstone. The ten stone hearts aren't as united as you think. Cornerstones are significantly more precious to them than their very own lives. But you know that he's a crazed gambler. The more vocal he is about it, the more cautious I must be. I never imagined someone would share his way of thinking. Honestly, you should see a shrink. Bring it. The box containing the cornerstone is unique, and only IPC senior staff and related members can access it. But I happen to be among them. <laughs> I appreciate it. Unfortunately, your guess is correct. <laughs> and glow are similar to that of Klepoth's body. This is the very ruse he intends to use to fool you. He won't reveal to you that the Ten Stone Hearts chisel their own will into the cornerstones, granting them an unparalleled radiance. And this golden statue is also known as Topaz, not Adventurine. And it belongs to Topaz. So, do you wish to confront him? Uh, not at the moment. I'm more interested to know the location of his cornerstone. The safest place somewhere you'd never think of. Because he never intended to hide it. In fact, that cornerstone has been in your hands from the very beginning. I see. This bag. Mixing a cornerstone, more precious than life itself, with a bunch of worthless jewels, disguised as a gift of money waiting to be confiscated, is indeed in line with Mr. Aventurine's style. Then he makes up some trivial excuse, downplaying the matter and requests the gift money. This is a gamble, one he's all too familiar with. Betting on your single misstep, leading to a total loss. Learn it, Doctor. I am grateful for your help. The family will surely reward a righteous person like you. As for the villain... <laughs> I hope he retreats in humiliation. It was all thanks to your friend with a keen eye that I could add a blot of utter failure to your storied career. Horatio, <sighs> you wretch. Oh. <laughs> Finally shown your true colors, huh? Oh, and just to remind you, you currently only have 17 system hours left to live. Treasure your remaining time and savor the delectable aftertaste of defeat. <sighs> you might as well explain yourself a little more clearly. What I performed on you just now was the Harmony's consecration. You were to show allegiance beneath the illumination of their grace. Yet you acted willfully, uttering nothing but falsehoods, transforming the consecration into a trial. I genuinely see no reason to absolve you from it. <laughs> is this what the Harmony represents? But is it built upon constraint and coercion? <laughs> you misunderstand, Mr. Aventurine. Punishment is meant for the irreverent. But I have seen your resilient spirit, and thus I offer you the possibility of a new beginning. Throughout these 17 system hours, 
you will be unable to escape the dreamscape or contact any of your companions. You only have two paths before you, and it all depends on whether you can complete my test within the time limit. Wow. Should you succeed, you will be able to coalesce into the harmony and be with your family. If you fail, you will suffer the wrath of the eternal centurion and fall into an abyss of doom. <sighs> oh, sounds like I'm gonna end up the same either way. I indeed do need a servant to help me uncover the evil hidden in the family from an external perspective. I will purge the evil from the inside and bring the real culprits to justice within 17 system hours. When the time comes, compare your findings with mine. If both our findings align, or if you can provide me more insights, then they will truly be able to grant you mercy and honesty. Shameless hypocrites. You took everything from me and still demand the truth? That isn't fair. Your carnival reeks with the stench of cash. Nothing is achievable without it. This is meant to be an act of personal virtue, not requiring the family's support. Your bag is over there. Do as you please. I believe you can trade this bag of worthless jewels for everything you need. That's what gamblers excel at, isn't it? Off you go, Mr. Aventurine. You are free. I will wait here for your good news. Wow. Dang, Sunday is... Hmm. This meeting isn't an interrogation or a negotiation. It's an outright execution. <laughs> Why would I do that, Mr. Aventurine? I'm just wondering what a passerby who stumbled upon a scene of a murder could have found out. That's all. By the way, before you go, I have a personal question. What is it now? You... Do you truly wish to bring about the destruction of this world? Wow. Still questioning that. Kavisha! Where did you go? Oh, are you injured? I got it back, sister. You went to look for them? That's too dangerous. It's just a necklace. It's neither food nor water. We can survive without it. I can't live without you, little brother. Promise me not to look for those catechins again, okay? Sister, don't be afraid. The catechins are fools, but I'm smart. I played a game with them, and I won. Won? What happened exactly? Tell me. I made a bet with them. The two birds in the desert and me. Who will die first? I won. They suspected me of cheating, but I didn't. I won fair and square. <laughs> of course. Of course you'd win. You've always been a lucky child. Gayathra Triclops must be watching over you. But that's no reason to push your luck by going up against those... those bloodthirsty, cruel catechins. Have you forgotten how mom and dad... Look, this is just a necklace. But Kakavasha, you are my only family. <sighs> I'm sorry, sister. I thought you'd be happy. Because mom left you this necklace. Aww. Wow. There'll be no next time. It is important, but not as important as you, my dearest brother. I, I don't blame you, but you must remember what Mom said. Pain 
and poverty are the trials of Gyathra Triclops. She has also granted us a chance. And that's your good luck, Akavasha. Your good luck is the most precious wealth we all Avgen have. You're a child blessed by Gyathra Triclops and can lead the clan to happiness. So always remember to protect yourself and never resent the pain and poverty you're going through, all right? to Gyathra Triclops to protect this wealth. But sister, if Gyathra Triclops was really watching over us, then why did she not protect Dad when he was swept away by the quicksand? After all, Dad went to the Catechins' land only to prepare for Gyathra Triclops' offerings. And where was Gyathra Triclops when Mom was shivering in our arms? Mom was still pleading for Gyathra Triclops' forgiveness under her breath until the moment she closed her eyes. Sister, everyone praises me for being smart, but I don't get it. If every rain pour was Gyathra Triclops' forgiveness and grace, then how bad were our sins? So much so that we were born in this world of death? Wow. Um, excuse me. I can't seem to find any information on this artist in the Iris family archives. The photo you provided also doesn't show any matches. Hmm, just as I thought. I'd like to ask. What kind of traces do people leave when they enter a dream? Are you referring to the records when you enter the dream pool? The equipment will monitor physiological indicators, such as heart rate, blood oxygen levels, and body temperature in real time. This data will be included in statistics and handed over to the family for the screening of any data anomalies. Immediate action will be taken once any illegal behavior is detected. Possible to access these records. Feels like our every move is being watched. Please rest assured, your vitals are monitored in case of emergencies, allowing us to wake you if necessary. This is all for the safety of our guests. And can I trouble you to access the records? I apologize. The hotel does not have access. This information is managed by the Bloodhound family. We can only gain access if there's a problem. Looks like nothing can be found here. At least we know who to look for next. We can ask the Bloodhound family for information. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Allie. By the way, is Miss Robin doing fine? We are looking forward to her performance. Fine? What does that mean? Is there something wrong with Miss Robin? The preparations for the Charmony Festival have been proceeding smoothly, so I guess things are pretty good. I believe she will be able to put on a spectacular show for all of you. Hmm, I'm sure. Sure enough, no one knows about Miss Robin. I'm not surprised. But that Miss Firefly is truly mysterious. There's no information on her in the hotel system. Even if she's a stowaway, she should have a disguised identity after entering the planet. She's also in the running for the legacy. How is she going to sneak into the dreamscape unnoticed? Uh, is there any other way to enter a dream? Besides the hotel room's dream pool? The Memo Keepers have abilities that are difficult for normal people to comprehend. In the memory zone of Penacony, they thrive effortlessly. 
a fact proven to us by Black Swan. The hacker girl from the Stellaron Hunters used extraordinary means to unlock the Dreamscape Hotel's seal. According to the scene witnessed by him, it is likely that they are behind Miss Firefly's case. The Garden of Recollection and the Stellaron Hunters. Both are possible, but what about the IPC? Since they want Penacony all for themselves, they're bound to have a plan. Oh, who are you guys? The Bravo team has arrived at their designated position. Ready to execute armed evacuation operation. Fox, get moving! Uh, uh, armed evacuation? Boss, aren't you drunk? What do you know? It's more efficient this way. Just don't let the director find out. Act first, report later. Understood. Help, help me. I spent all my year-end bonus on the snowball. I don't want my name on the department's major disciplinary notice. Hey, check it out. That place. Could it be the IPC workers from Bellabog? To all guests. The IPC will be conducting special operations within the hotel. Please follow the staff in charge of evacuation to the designated safe zones, or compulsory measures will be enforced. I'll request a beating for you lot! You've been told not to drink during work hours. Take him back to the hotel room. I'll organize a meeting later to properly go over how this incident report should be written. Miss Topaz? I never thought I'd run into you on Penacony. <sighs> oh, long time no see, Astral Express crew. Even Train has told me a lot about your happenings. Huh? Fine. Do as they ask, and try to avoid any conflicts with the family. Report to me before taking any action. <laughs> yes. All right. As you see, the IPC isn't very popular here on Penacony. Cordiality from the family is a mere facade. The former Frontier Prison has turned around and cuffed its shackles on the IPC staff now. Only a Venturine, who carries an invitation, is allowed to attend the banquet. An entourage like us, we can only sit around in the Reality Hotel, unauthorized to even enter dreams. No wonder a Venturine's scrambling to partner up with someone. The IPC can't back him up in the dreamscape. <sighs> His situation isn't optimistic, I hear. You're all helping to investigate some dirt on the family, are you not? Let me know if you need anything outside the dreamscape. The IPC always treats its partners well. Thank you, Miss Topaz. We're on our way to the Hounds to verify some intel. Perhaps you've had dealings with them? <laughs> yep. They're tailing us right now. Why not go and talk to them? They don't take the spotlight off me. Being constantly stared at is really uncomfortable. Okay, gonna talk to Topaz. How does it feel to be in business with a Venturine? <laughs> I bet you're not used to it. That's just his style. Ball or nothing is his mantra. He's always cozying up to his clients while egging them on to undertake some dangerous assignment with him. But everyone has their merits, so I won't comment further. But Venturine's luck has always been good. He's always closed all his cases without a hitch and basically never lost a gamble. Which is why, on the issue of retaking Panacone, I'm watching with keen interest. Works only when all parties' interests are aligned. 
Of course. It's business after all. What's important is where you're seated at the table. And as for the two cases, apologies, but I don't have much info on them either. All I can do is ask you to keep digging for more details. Please, continue to investigate the case. All I can do is sit tight in the real world. I look forward to hearing your progress. We're carrying out our captain's orders. What, what do you want? We made a mistake last time, and we're working hard to rectify it now. We don't have time for anything else. Surveilling the IPC executive Topaz, ensuring that she stays put at the Reverie Hotel during her time on Panacone. We've got the right one this time. So that's it. They were the pair who were after Firefly at the time. It's you again. Back for more trouble? We're not afraid of you this time. Well, spit it out. Stop bothering us if you've nothing important. So you know each other. Uh, why do you keep running into people you've beaten up before? I need to pull some records for me. Our hunch. That's right. We're investigating a murder for the family. Can we speak to your captain about the case? Oh. Uh, well... Hey! The security officer instructed everyone to shut their traps before he returned from Dream's Edge. What murder? You'd better stop spouting nonsense. Yeah, th uh, th that's right. We have nothing to report. Please leave. Looks like they're not going to cooperate. But they did at least tell us that the captain is at Dream's Edge. Why don't we just look for the security officer then? It's probably Gallagher, the one he mentioned, right? <laughs> oh, man. I've been at this for a while. <laughs> Eventually I will probably have to take a break. Oh, such tight security. I bet they're stumped by the case as well. Uh, Gallagher. Gallagher. Apologies. The Bloodhound family is running an investigation up ahead. No unauthorized personnel allowed. Hold on a minute. I think I've seen you before. The, the gray-haired one. How much trouble have you stirred up exactly on Penacone? Say that, Chief. You got the wrong guy. Not possible. It was you the last time yelling about some clockwork friendship while beating me up with that silver-haired girl. <laughs> Uh... I'm not letting you get by this time! <laughs> Please leave, or I'll have to get on my knees and beg you. Huh? What kind of heinous crime have you committed now? Hold on, sir. We have documents authorized by the family that would aid your investigation. If it wouldn't trouble you, could we see this Mr. Gallagher? Who exactly is this Gallagher you keep talking about? There have been a few people mentioning this name. Even the one with the gray hair. Uh, he didn't send you all here? It was the security officer who dispatched us? That's all I can divulge. Uh, he'll do! He's the one we've been looking for! <sighs> Sorry. No can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. 
Everyone, please leave. There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? We're really sorry for troubling you. <sighs> Let's think of another way. Another way? Uh, that's it! Didn't they say something about that... Oh, uh, what was it? Clockwork? That got this guy to change his mind? Can you perform it again? That... Uh, clocky magic! But I can't abuse it for evil doings. It's not bad if we're resolving a misunderstanding. Please. <sighs> Sorry, no can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Everyone, please leave. There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? Okay. <sighs> Let me see what time it is now. Whoa! It's this time already, what? Time to clock out, and no one's gonna stop me. <laughs> uh, well, uh, they worked. Huh? <laughs> uh, this clockwork trick of yours, it's kinda dangerous. Yep. At least he won't be getting in our way again. Let's go find that Gallagher and ask him the intricacies of the case. I was wondering what all the commotion was. Huh. Oh, it's you guys. Welcome. Since you made it here, what can I do for you? Hello, Mr. Gallagher, sir. Judging from your tone, it sounds like you were expecting us. Ha ha ha. Miss Himako, you're too polite. There's no need to call me sir. Mr. Gallagher, you even know my name. Of course I do. You folks are from the legendary Astral Express and honorable guests of the Watchmaker. I had an encounter with this gentleman in the Golden Hour. I remember that little silver-haired girl was there too. I'm sorry for what happened to that kid. Exactly what the family has ordered us this to This is also the reason why we've come to visit you, Mr. Gallagher. The Express can't just overlook the death of that child. So we've decided to help the family get to the bottom of it, in the hopes of getting justice for her. The Nameless involved with the family. What an unpredictable twist of fate. Why? What's wrong with the family? Uh, it's nothing. On Penicone, everyone loves the family. No matter how much one resists the beautiful dream, when the time comes, they too will find it hard to let go. Who wants to leave a warm nest? Just idiots, little kids, and inebriated fools. Mr. Gallagher seems to be getting at something. Well, you got it wrong. I'm not. You want to discuss the case? Sure. Come with me. This is not a good place to talk. Let's go elsewhere. Even after that, chilling tragedy, this dream is still running effortlessly. Other than the family of the Harmony, it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude. The family itself is a huge, perfect building, like a living idol. 
Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. Interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Penacone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. But the human body has its limits, and so does the Divines. That doesn't sound like the kind of comment a Galaxy Ranger would make. Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better sense of what's going on than I do. Why do you say that, Miss Acheron? The beautiful dream is crumbling. But not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. That's collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms as the inevitable conclusion. Also, this necrosis will diffuse and spread. One piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? Of course. That's if I remember. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily... forgetful. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. Take your time. That should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Panacone. Ask away. Okay. Regarding the moment of daybreak... The moment of daybreak. I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the dreamscape, is located. Behind the dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams. Then they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. A far cry from luxury. They say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. The perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. For certain reasons, her wish was difficult to fulfill. But I managed to bring her a garment. Regarding the Gilded Hour? Gilded Hour. It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yes. It is a fortress-like financial city. The economic heart of the dreamscape. The Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running. Sending blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. I've never met anyone who is willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they'd earned into the bank's vault. I don't know if they would open the vault door, but before I left, I witnessed a well-dressed Papeshi person plummet from the sky. All those around him continued on their way, unfazed. The blue I hour? hear the blue hour is 
very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Aventide, anchored along the Sea of Dreams, where soft music and dancing persist endlessly every night. I ran into a wizened lady there. She was at the dock, waiting for her long-departed lover to return, waiting for countless hours within a time that stood still. In the humid sea breeze, she spoke of her own youth. Like many who desired wealth and love, they came to Panacone to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. Finally, she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Finally, we retreated to the beach. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism, the moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. Then you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money as if it were dust and betting it on all or nothing. Everything has a price, and everything can be bought or sold. Even dreams themselves. I saw an Intellitron there, who was preparing to auction himself. When someone wins a bid, under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times, and I participated in his 13th. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him. This time around, there were no successful bids for him. <laughs> I was drinking. Right, that's everything. This is what I've seen and heard along the way. Someone once said to me, Panacone wasn't like this a long time ago, nor should it be. I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of festivities, watched the tides of night rise and fall when time stopped for people, where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. There might be a way to change everything. Perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? <sighs> Miss Acheron? Now it's my turn to share a story with you. There was a man from my homeland who, at a time when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain, made a choice. He wove together the dreams of everyone in the world, linking people's dreamscapes, and shouldered this burden himself. From this, he created a giant, a spiritual Adam. And since that moment, the giant stood between heaven and earth, becoming the pillar of the world's existence. As a price, those who found it hard to move forward, who could not advance, forever lost their future. They slumbered in a dream, devoid of disaster and pain, living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia. And it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken that this spiritual Adam became unbreakable. And yet, you stand here right now, which also means that man failed. Because people must always move towards the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they truly cannot move forward, 
humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. And that man, he was never a failure. Like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. He ascended to heights uncharted, only to come face to face with the sun, a place not visited by anyone before. His wings would melt because of it, only for him to fall into the sea. And after that, countless others would surpass him, soaring to even greater heights. A fitting metaphor for the nameless's trailblazing spirit. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar, yet different, worlds. In these worlds, there are innumerable people who look alike, yet don't. I, too, have embarked on journeys, encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds, witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine. So I will tell you, even if not completely similar, the story you just told, it overlaps with my past, and within that abyssal dream. I ended that man's life, alone. <sighs> I am not who you think I am. Nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. I am sorry. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicions. There's something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey thus far? Mr. Yang, before answering that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly, but in a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and blanketing the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch its ceiling, all because the sun was there. Then, what if the last bird finally soars into the sky, only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness? Then why, exactly, do we even walk towards the light? It's a good question, huh? Who knows? Maybe because we're still trying to find the idea of hope. <laughs> Black Swan still hasn't answered that phone yet. <laughs> I don't blame her. I wouldn't answer it. It's gonna keep ringing. Long time no see. Having fun on Penatoni? Acheron. This voice. It's not Constance. Could it be her companion? Though I don't know exactly what you are, or what you're up to, my bullets will find you. Oh. <laughs> Until then, you best find a casket store on Panacone and ask the owner to reserve a good quality casket for you, imposter. Oh my gosh, the spoil of the new character already. I see. She gave my whereabouts to someone who's tracking Acheron too. Who are you? Huh? Uh, did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, who the heck are you? I'm the Garden of Recollections Memo Keeper. <laughs> Not bad. This 
just the kind of tough challenge I like. You that imposter's bodyguard? <sighs> Never mind. <sighs> it's fine. I'll leave a round for you. So get that forehead clean and wait for me. Oh my. I don't know what you're talking about, but you know Acheron, the Galaxy Ranger? Yes. I have something to ask you. <laughs> Are you asking me to write your will? Sure. Go ahead. Not quite. I only want to ask, how exactly did she become a Galaxy Ranger? <sighs> She's clearly not a path strider of the hunt, but you are, aren't you? Tell me, what's Acheron's deal? <laughs> sure. Heck, never thought I'd come across an ally. What a stroke of luck. Um, well... <laughs> I'll be on Penacone soon. Uh, memo Keeper, go buy a bottle of Asdana's White Oak and warm it up, and I'll raise a glass to you. That lady's past. <laughs> well, nobody knows. But if all you want is a simple answer, sure, you best get a chair and take a seat. That woman named Acheron is an emanator who should not exist. So May? I still think it's starting back to May. You look pale. Or is that also part of your act? I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself. I thought this was exactly what you wanted. After all, I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed. Just tell me if you can't hold on any longer. So, the genius of the Council of Mundanites wants to be my undertaker now. <laughs> my, what an honor. Yes. And I'm pretty sure the people at the Strategic Investment Department would love to be notified of your death in due time. But let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. <laughs> Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the harmony? My conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family, and that they hold the secrets of Penacone. So I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. <laughs> Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Let's just wait and see. Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying that you failed. <laughs> That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. Go. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Panacone. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash even when I'm about to bite the dust. You are, indeed, a gambler. An insane one, at that. Oh, well, maybe I am. Who knows? <sighs> Fine. 
here, take this. Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. What's this? Medical advice? <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> you catch on pretty fast, Doctor. <laughs> Asking me to solve a case without giving a single clue. How <laughs> typical of you. Wing-headed scoundrel. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway... <laughs> Just as I guessed it would be. As for now, let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone. Wow. And now, apparently, I have. problems. Good visions. Uh, the world has truly lost its way. Yeah, I got these gems for you. You wait. I get it now. This is some sort of prank show, right? You must have some camera set up around here to film yourself doing good deeds, right? You youngsters are always looking for a quick way to get an audience. But you know what? A truly great show never comes easy. <laughs> a great show will start soon, old man. But before that, I need to ask you something. Do you know where I can find death in this dream? Ah, I see. Another fearless youngster looking for death. Oh, wow. Let me give you a piece of advice. Don't think you're the first one who's ever thought of that idea. Death? Not even remotely innovative. I bought it from Dr. Edward. He claimed it was some exclusive fancy schmancy stuff. Oh, what a disappointment. The effects were awful. First, some monster covered in eyes stabs you in the gut. And then all you see are blurry glimpses of buildings and lights. Oh, the sky was spinning so fast it almost made me puke. Is that all? Yeah, what else can you expect? Don't put too much stock in the Penacone movie industry. They even call this junk groundbreaking art. Can you believe it? <laughs> what a joke. Well, I'll leave you be then. I hope you have a wonderful day. A monster covered in eyes. That sounds like the memory zone meme. But buildings and lights... I don't think those have anything to do with death. Well, that whole dream bubble was probably created using rumors and gossip. I can feel something inside my head. Is the harmony starting to kick in? Oh dear. Would you be willing to support my performance? And keep the song of beauty alive in the cosmos? Wow, how fabulous! But why would you give such a wonderful gift to a random stranger like me? Well... You see, I can't bear to see anyone in this sweet dream suffering from poverty. That's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much, sir. If you ever get the chance, please feel free to come by and indulge in my singing. <laughs> sure thing. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know anything interesting about death? Death? That's a pretty scary topic, and it doesn't really match the mood of this sweet dream. <laughs> oh, you see, I'm a tabloid reporter collecting ghost stories in Panacone. <laughs> As you know, the more chilling the stories, the more attention they get. <laughs> Maybe you could 
can help me out. Well, if you're up for some gossip, it's not about death. But there have been some rumors about a guest at the Reality Hotel who fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up. It was like they were in some sort of coma. Nobody knows what caused it, but luckily the customer eventually regained consciousness. Well, all customers are under the protection of the family, after all. <laughs> Thank you. This will make for a very juicy headline. May Shive protect us? Unexplained coma. <laughs> That's actually what happens to your body if your brain dies in a dream. But unfortunately, the customer ended up waking up in the end. <sighs> the disturbing voice in my head. <sighs> it's getting closer. A sip of liquor. Blissful reprieve to drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. Oh? <laughs> you, you're giving these gems to me? Didn't expect to meet such a generous soul in this place. <laughs> or are you just pitying me? Well. It really doesn't matter. As long as I have Soul Glad, that's enough. This is just a dream, after all. <laughs> you really shouldn't drink so much Soul Glad, my friend. It's not good for your health. Oh? <laughs> Maybe I really should quit. But not before meeting the Devil of Soul Glad. <laughs> <laughs> the devil of soul glad? Care to elaborate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a seahorse with a long neck. <laughs> they say it loves to appear to junk people, especially the ones who are passed out on the side of the road. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> yeah. Very funny indeed. Thank you. <laughs> oh, does everyone have to go through so much torment before joining the family? Oh, darn it. <laughs> now I just want to dig out my brain and use it as evidence. Take care, my friend. If you ever find yourself in danger, remember that the hounds are always ready to help. <sighs> mm. Nearing its end. You don't look good, my friend. If you need assistance, I can contact the hotel and have them wake you up forcefully. That won't be necessary. I have some business to attend to. But thank you all the same. All right, then. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to reach out to us hounds. Well, actually, I do need a favor. As the most outstanding hound in Panacone, have you come across any <laughs> stowaways recently? Stowaways? How could there be stowaways in Penacony? We've never had anything like that before. All right. Good luck with your work, then. Oh, what was I even thinking? Family would never share intel with the IPC. Poor you want to talk to me? Sure, but nothing too sensitive, okay? Huh. Wealthy people have fancy ways to enjoy this dream. But to be honest, I've never seen anyone who gives out money to others like you. So, are you trying to...
going to be the prince from the tale, handing out his gold leaf garment and melting his lead heart in the fire? <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm no prince, and I just thought these gems would help you speak. So, as an investigative reporter, maybe you've heard something about death? Oh, another curious soul. I see. Well, that was actually the topic I was most into when I entered the industry. But my boss shut it down. How did your boss talk you out of it? Well, she simply said, covering baseless urban legends like that would make us look like some third-rate tabloid. I thought about it, and she had a point. Reporting on stuff like blowing out birthday candles and getting spooked by nightmare ghosts isn't exactly professional material. Mm, guess she's got a point. Thank you for sharing. It's getting worse. <laughs> Hang in there, Venturine. Were you wanting to talk to me? Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. Is this a gift for me? Are you sure this isn't some kind of mistake? Yes, it's for you. <laughs> Just take it. Is this for real? Someone is actually giving me a gift. Not for my parents, but for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, it's not much. I just want to ask you something. I knew it. What's on your mind? Are you trying to ask about my father or my mother? Um... Neither. I just wanted to know if you've ever heard about death in the dreamscape. Oh, you sound just like my father. Always warning me about danger, even in dreams. He's an Intellitron, so his dream entry methods are different from us organics. Can't count on him to protect me if something does go haywire. Funny, right now I'm still under his protection. How ironic. Hey, stay positive. Gold will always shine one day, right? Hmm. The devil of soul glad. Dangers in the dream. And nightmare ghosts. Well, surely death is a popular topic in this. Oh, shoot. Well, didn't know it was going to trigger. Oh, well. Venturine, hang Remember in there. What I said, you Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. Look at you, snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Is the smell of death so enticing, my fine fellow? Sparkle. <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. What do you mean? You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. Uh, no, I, I mean... What did you mean by becoming one myself? Well, it means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. Oh, man. <laughs> but it's a good thing if you ask me because because I'm getting closer to the truth right oh why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets fool all part of the act 
fool's bait. The more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. So, now that I've drawn you out, will you reward me with an answer for my efforts? Why should I help you? Don't you want to see Panacone descend into... chaos? Well, I can make that happen. I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a mute, did you really mean Robin? Hmm. And what if I say no? Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you, but what difference would it make? Let me tell you something. There were two mutes, but one is dead now, and the other... Though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. Now I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed, fool. Right now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth, and the means to expose it. <laughs> How impressive. That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't learned anything so far. Not exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17... No. 16 system hours. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Well, let me lend you a hand. Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured distraction button. And I have one just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Panacone will go up in smoke. If you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Panacone, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? Just press the button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care, too. Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. Otherwise, how on earth did you manage to bring it in here? <laughs> <laughs> I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Panacone. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax... The walls will crumble, people will wake up, and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again. When that time comes, go ahead, press the button, light up the sky with a magnificent fireworks display for me. Catch you later, fool. <laughs> You're still talking big, but sure, if that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Just don't let me down now, okay? Hmm. So, number 35. You're back. Like your new lucky charm. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! 
I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. <sighs> the guys in black didn't say much, so I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. But I figured you must have had good luck, so I bought you. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. <laughs> are we clear? Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. Go and play a game with them. <laughs> you came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. You're insane. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. But you look good. And that's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now and uh, don't let your master down. Uh, how much did you spend? What? My price. Uh, how much did you pay for me? Huh. You really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 tanba. No more, no less. I'll take my chances. 30 tanba. If I come back alive, you'll give me 30 tanba. Deal? <laughs> Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Oh, well, you've got some guts. Yeah, sorry, but, uh, that won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. You're not qualified to be at the table. You're just a chip. A life thrown away in someone else's hands. Either you come back with more chips for your master, or you never come back. It's all or nothing. Don't embarrass me, my lucky hound. Wow. <laughs> what brings you here, Gallagher? <sighs> Some friends from the old days. Do you have a moment to spare, Siobhan? Oh, I have the whole day to spare. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dream Jolt Hostelry. This bar offers a wide variety of drinks, but we draw the line at Soul Blad. Why settle for ordinary when you can experience extraordinary? We're dedicated to serving up nothing but pure joy and laughter. <laughs> what would you like to drink? I'll whip it up for you. Oh, look! A lady as cool as Sir Ball! Who's Sir Val? Will you, uh, introduce me to her? Huh? Oops. <laughs> She's heard us. Just spare them, my esteemed bartender. I'll take over the bar today. I'm getting up there in age, and I need some practice before I forget the skills that used to put food on my table. Uh, where did you stash the ingredients? They're all under the counter. Since our guests have traveled from afar, Shouldn't you whip up some special drinks? That's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> hey, my friends, do me a favor. Go around the bar and bring me any ingredients you fancy. The discussion might take quite some time, so I'll prepare some customized, non-alcoholic drinks for you. In the bar? But aren't all the ingredients right there on the counter? Why, we're in a dream, my lovely lady. 
You can help yourself to anything if you wish for it. Comfort, hunger, confusion, or even boredom. It's all within reach, right at your fingertips. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? She just called me my lovely lady. <sighs> even in reality, mixing drinks is more than just throwing ingredients together. A bartender needs to capture the bar's atmosphere, master technique, and spin a tale of mystery and anticipation. Only then can a perfect drink crafted with a customer's life story be created. In other words, what you get from your drink is down to luck, so don't overthink it. Indecisiveness has no place when it comes to enjoyment. Wow. All right. And as much as I would love to do that, I think I'm going to stop here with Kafka and the other gang. <laughs> but I hope you guys really enjoy this. And uh, quite the adventure, really, if you ask me. <laughs> but um, honestly, I, I am so happy that I got to do this with you guys. And... Um, I'm getting tired, and I may, of course, I will finish off recording whatever's left, you know, when I get more energy, and, um, <laughs> I was about to blitter sing on here, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great time, and, um, you know, please remember to hit that like button, and please be sure to subscribe, so that way you guys don't miss out any content that comes out here on my channel. I just want to thank you guys, especially to those that were, uh, on the Twitch and also YouTube that came to watch me. I really appreciate it. So, uh, hope you guys take it easy and, uh, until then, stay safe. So, remember, I'll see you guys, like I said, next time. And until then, love you all, and, uh, see you guys next time. Until then, bye guys. <laughs>